Good evening, City of Lamar, City Council, regular agenda of March 25th, 2024. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Lamar, Texas will conduct a regular meeting on March 25th, 2024, beginning at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers at 1109B Bayou Road, Lamar, Texas, as well as via video conference hosted through Zoom in accordance with section 551.127B of the Texas Local Government Code, the presiding officer and a quorum of the Lamarck City Council intend to be and will physically be present at 1109B Bayou Road, Lamarck, Texas. This location will be open to the public and the meeting will be broadcast at this location on channel 16 and via YouTube. The council will meet for the purpose of considering the following agenda. The meeting has been called to order. Kiara, would you give us a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Councilman Redistrict A. Present. Councilman Redistrict B. Present. Councilman Redistrict C. Present. Councilman Redistrict D. Present. And Mayor. Present. Thank you. We will now have Pastor Jervy from the uh, Resonate Church. Uh, ah, Pastor Ingrid Clark from the First United Methodist Church of Lamarck, Texas, will lead us in our invocation. Pastor Clark, you may approach. And we will have Mr. Garcia lead us in our pledge. Won't you please bow your heads and join me in prayer? Gracious and most holy God, we thank you for this day, Lord, for the sunny skies, the fresh air, for the uh, rain that we got this afternoon, Lord, for the refreshing that it brings new life into this area. Lord, as we come together today as citizens of Lamarck, we pray for our city council, for our leaders, as they go about the business of this community. Lord, we pray that you will grant them wisdom, that you will grant them courage to make all the hard decisions, and you will grant them peace. Lord, we pray for this community that your spirit will rise up and will abound, that neighbor will love neighbor, that a sense of community will spread far and wide, and that we realize that we are better together. Lord, we pray for your spirit to move in a mighty way, and we thank you for all that you've done and all that you'll continue to do in the city of Lamarck. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's, I was about to go grab it. Apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look here. We just have to borrow next door. But if you guys... The flag used to be. <laughs> Can we wait a few minutes? We don't want to pledge allegiance to a blue wall. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right. Oh, uh oh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, please uh, join me in the pledge. <laughs> Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice Thank you for your efforts, Mr. Garcia. We now have uh, presentations, item four. Four one, introducing the LMPD Chaplain Care Program and the participants, Chief Argon. Mayor. Uh, we have a chaplain program. Uh, it's called the Lamar Police Department uh, Chaplain Care Program. We have two of the 10 members of you come up here, uh, Chaplain Jervy and just four here. Oh, thank okay. you. Susan. Oh, there he is. Mm -hmm. Pastor Lane, come on up here. And you got our deputy city manager. He's one of them, too. If you come up here. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got you got to do the picture. OK, <laughs> we, in 2021, uh, we started working with Jervy and uh, Pastor Scott, Richard Scott, who's my pastor, by the way. And Jervy, in his, with his leadership from his military service and Richard, we actually have 10 police department chapters. I think we have more than city, Houston Police Department. But wow. you got four right here. The other ones are being chaplain somewhere doing their pastor duties. But they are actually on call. There's a roster at the police department. 
And if anybody needs emotional support or faith-based support, it could be an officer, could be an employee, could be a citizen, they get called. This month, it's, it's Chaplain Ingrid Clark. She is, that's why she's here. And not only are they on call for faith, faith-based services or you know, emotional support, she, did, she does the invocation for this month. It's her turn. Mm -hmm. So anyway, with that, uh, Jervy, would you come up here and, and say a few words? I just want to say that um, it's just an absolute pleasure and honor for all of the chaplains to support not only the officers and staff and families of the Lamarck Police Department, but our community <clears throat> as a whole. We're here for the community. If you need us, um, the PD knows how to get in contact with us. We're also available for other first responder organizations that support our community. So it truly is a pleasure to serve. And so we love Lamarck. You know, we're here for you. And they, they have badges and ID cards. They've been background checked and everything. And uh, even our city deputy city manager, I had to check him out. <laughs> so with that, uh, I'm really proud of this. We meet monthly on Zoom. Every other month we have a, a meeting, a breakfast meeting at the PD. So with that, I am so proud of this group. And thank you so much. And I salute you all. Thank you. Let's give this group a round of applause. We certainly thank you pastors for your efforts, for being available to our officers, uh, to their families, uh, and certainly to our community. Uh, I know uh, full well how important pastors are to communities uh, and how selfless pastors are. And so we thank you as a council and certainly as a community we thank you for your efforts, and we look forward to you and all of the wonderful work, all of the sharing of grace uh, and the love of God throughout our community. We're excited about it. And if we are, Chief, if we, if we do have a, a large number of, of chaplains, we should brag about that. We should, we should certainly let our peers know in other, other uh, departments how blessed we are, you know, how many pastors we have working with our police department. So, uh, Deputy City Manager, I'm sure he can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, let's move now from item 4.1 to item 4.2, which is a very important reason why we need pastors in our community. Uh, and it is a proclamation uh, for Child Abuse Prevention Month. Bear with us. Are there representatives from CASA here tonight? The council has uh, uh, historically supported CASA by the uh, reading of proclamations and the wearing of uh, the message. Certainly all council, I believe, tonight has participated. <laughs> well, would you give... Uh, the, the uh, council chambers, your, your, give those your name and the uh, organization that you represent, the yes, job that you Absolutely. Um, I'm Rose Lazo. I am a CASA board member. And I'm Allie Hines. Um, I'm the program assistant with CASA of Galveston County. Very good. Very good. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for the work that you do again in our community. Uh, we know that uh, our seniors and our children are the most vulnerable members of our society, and the markets go different. So you all have done tremendous amounts of work in our community. Again, as with the pastors of this community, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Uh, we cannot pay you enough, uh, but we certainly can recognize you in the highest form, uh, and that is with a proclamation from this mayor and this council. So the office of the mayor for the city of Lamarck proclamation, whereas child abuse and neglect is a serious problem permeating every segment of our community, Finding solutions require input and action from everyone, and whereas our children are our most valuable resources and will shape the future of the city of Lamarck, and whereas child abuse can have long-term psychological, emotional, physical effects that have lasting consequences for victims of abuse, and whereas effective child abuse prevention activities succeed because of the partnerships created between child welfare professionals, education, health, community, and faith-based organizations, 
business, law enforcement agencies, and families, and whereas communities must make every effort to promote programs and activities that create strong and thriving children and families, and whereas the city of Lamont acknowledges that we must work together as a community to increase awareness about child abuse and contribute to promote the social and emotional well-being of children and families in a safe, stable, and nurturing environment. And now, therefore, we, the mayor and council, by virtue of the authority vested by the city of North Texas, do hereby proclaim the month of April as child abuse prevention month. In the city of Lamar, can do hereby urge all citizens of Lamar to recognize this month by dedicating ourselves to the task of improving the quality of life for all children and families. In testimony whereof, witness my hand and seal of the city of Lamar this 20th day of March 2024, Keith Bell Mayor. Let's give this group a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Mayor, may I? Yes. May I also comment that we will be uh, having both City Hall and our library uh, with our uh, decorative lights in both Navy and white in support of Costa for the entire month of April to recognize their efforts and uh, hopefully to 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 gather support uh, from, from, from the rest of the community to also support the cause. Thank you. Very good. Is there a representative from... The family of James Jimmy Kling Sr. James Jimmy Kling Sr. Uh, was a remarkable resident of the city of Lamarck. Uh, we have uh, celebrated his homegoing service on last week and we read the proclamation at his homegoing uh, service. Uh, but let the record reflect uh, that he was a Lamarck police officer. Let the record also reflect, let me get closer to the microphone. He was a Lamarck police officer that served with distinction. Let the record reflect that he was a former city council member who served this great city of Lamarck uh, for two terms from 1981 to 1987, also serving as mayor pro tem. And so again, wonderful, wonderful servant of this great city. And so we acknowledge him. Uh, by acknowledging uh, and proclaiming uh, Jimmy Kling Senior Memorial Day on March 19th, 2024. Is there representatives from Elijah, uh, Eli, Eli, excuse me, Donald Ray Johnson here? Reverend Eli. Donald Ray Johnson uh, was a resident of Lamarck uh, who was uh, just recently on our cemetery board. Uh, he became ill and he could no longer continue in that service. Uh, and so his wife was appointed to carry out his term, uh, but he was a very loving man committed to the cemetery board uh, and the city of Lamarck. Uh, and so we, uh, the council proclaim uh, March 9th as Reverend Eli Johnson Day, because we remember those and we honor those who have served our city with distinction. And so we give a round of applause to Reverend Johnson. We will make sure that these two families receive these uh, proclamations and all the sentiments from the city of Lamar. We're now up to item five, citizens participation limited to three minutes per person. Comments from the public will be heard at this time. Any person with city related business who has signed up may speak to council limited to three minutes. Uh, if wishing to speak, give the mayor or the presiding officer your full legal name, your address and the item you wish to speak about. In compliance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, the city may not deliberate on comments Personal attacks will not be allowed and personnel matters should be addressed to the city manager during normal business hours. If you're visiting with us via phone, you may press star six to mute or unmute yourself. 
Uh, if you are visiting with us uh, via the Zoom platform, smartphone, tablet, or computer, there should be a microphone icon in the lower portion of your screen. Uh, and if you are here uh, in person, you may approach the podium uh, at the center aisle uh, with your name and address, and you will be heard at this time. Kyle, are there any persons online wishing to speak? There are no persons online wishing to speak. I believe we have one person here tonight wishing to speak. Uh, two persons, uh, Mr. Corey and Mrs. I don't want to mess this up. Katie, Katie Maxwell. Welcome. Please provide your name and address for the record. Uh, yes, my name is Katie Maxwell. Um, I live at 1803 Cedar Drive, right across the street. And um, the issue that we wanted to present to you guys tonight has to do with the drainage over here, right on the other side of our fence. It's on school property. Um, we've been here for over 15 years, um, continuing to improve our property. And um, the issue of the stagnant water presents several different problems um, other than it just being unsightly and um, gross. It's a massive greeting brown for mosquitoes. Um, our fence is rotting. And in addition to that, we haven't been able to mow or clean on the outside of that a lot of times when it's really wet, soggy, and that's something that we generally do, but it's been, you know, with construction and everything. It just came. My name's Corey Maxwell. I'm her husband. And ever since they built the school, there's a Lake Cedar. Ever since then, I mean, it wasn't there before, but now it is. And we're just trying to get something, something to drain that elsewhere when it rains. You know, it rained Thursday, the lake's still there. Uh, Friday, I had to skip work because I couldn't get my trailer out the gate. And I mean, I guess that's what why I actually came today because that's the first time I'm skipping work because of it, and I'm like, I can't afford that. Yes, sir. So uh, if we could just send this to somebody that can take care of that, I know, I mean, all it, is, it just needs to be routed somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, every time it rains, it takes about a week, maybe two weeks of good sunshine yes, sir. for it to deplenish. And they've came over there maybe twice with like sump pump or something to drain it out and it'll suck it up. But as soon as it rains, it's back. And your mosquitoes, I mean, it's horrible. Yes, sir. So uh, if we could just <clears throat> point that out to somebody who cares and get it taken care of, that'd be great. Yes, sir. And that's all we got. Mr. And Mrs. Maxwell, um, we cannot respond to you uh, because it would violate Open Meetings Act. So we're looking at you and it's frustrating. <laughs> I, I get it. Uh, but we can't respond to you because then it would be an Open Meetings Act violation. But I can refer you to uh, Rick uh, Saylor, who is our public works director. He's in the red shirt here uh, and he could visit with you immediately uh, to help navigate this problem you have uh, with with the uh, flooding. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Caesar, did you want to have Rick catch them? I was actually going to have Thank JB you. catch them. Uh, cause okay. We're Very started. good. However it works. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move now to we are a council. Uh, we have been asked to, without objection, uh, move item 87 up. Item 87 up. This is a water service agreement, uh, and we have a major uh, announcement tonight, I believe, of a major development happening within the city of Lamarck. Uh, and so at this time, I will uh, ask Mr. Garcia to introduce the uh, Crossroads, Crossroads Development Group. Certainly. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to welcome the group to please come forward. Um, and actually, since I believe there's three in your group. So let me set up the chairs and the microphone, Mayor, if you'd allow me a moment mm -hmm. while we also queue up the presentation.
<laughs> Welcome. Can we start? Please do. Thank you. Let me introduce our team, our management team that are here tonight before I get started. I'm Michelle Sanders. I'm Vice President of CRV Development. We have our managing partner, Michael Bell, to my left, and Vice President Dennis Sanders to the right. So we're thrilled to be here. So let me just tell y'all a little bit about our development, if that's all right. Um, question, up button, who, who's in charge of this? We are right here. Up, up, down yeah. button goes to the next slide. Perfect, thanks. All right, thank you, Mayor Bell, um, City Manager Garcia, and council men and women and city administration for the opportunity to come before you to present this exciting development for the city of Lamarck and its residents and respectfully request Council's approval of the water agreement between the City of Lamarck and CRV development, which is needed in order to develop our 62-acre project. At the crossroads of I-45 and Highway 146, as you can see on the screen, sits approximately 62 acres with 30 acres on I-45 and the other 30 acres fronting Highway 146. This is a prime location with frontages on two heavily traveled roadways. Our development will consist of, on Highway 146, five acres will be developed as a retail center. The 25 acres adjacent to the retail area will sit a 25 acre, five star RV resort, including a four acre lake, million dollar clubhouse and luxury swimming pool. <clears throat> Regarding the 30 acres fronting I-45, this will be a tourist destination. We're extremely excited about the opportunity these 30 acres fronting I-45 brings with the high traffic count on I-45 and the infrastructure improvement currently going on by TxDOT on I-45, including widening the lanes to eight main lanes with two lane frontage roads. This will provide ease of access to our exciting development. We are planning a waterscape nature boardwalk experience with eight to 10 open air multi-level restaurants and a hotel and convention center. The restaurants and hotel will surround a dramatic waterscape with marshland and bird sanctuary that will be a destination for all ages. A perfect place to enjoy an evening out dining on the patio overlooking the beautiful water and nature feature, and after dinner, enjoying a stroll through the nature preserve, or alternatively, a daytime Boy Scout group activity in the nature area, or perhaps a wedding venue. This boardwalk district at the crossroads of I-45 and Highway 146 will be a coastal tourist destination a one-stop for dining, shopping, and relaxing with friends and family. The effect to the city of Lamarck and surrounding areas economically will be significant. The entire construction project with an estimated $80 million investment when completed will result in an estimated 592 jobs and 51 million in sales. The direct impact to the city of Lamarck for the first 10 years results in an estimated additional revenue of over 39 million, which includes 19 million sales tax, 16 million property tax, and 4 million in hotel taxes. This development, including the retail and resort on Highway 146 and 30 acre boardwalk experience, will be unmatched and will not only serve the residents of Lamarck and surrounding areas, but will bring people outside of the area to this tourist destination to enjoy the unique dining options and provide a fantastic place for family, friends, 
or simply some alone time to unwind. <clears throat> Conveniently located at the intersection of I-45 and Highway 146, the Convention Center will provide a beacon of hospitality along with some spectacular views. We thank you, City of Lamarck, and we look forward to working hand in hand with you to bring this mutually beneficial development to Lamarck. Very good, thank you, thank you. Um, Cesar, did you wanna add something? No, Mayor, uh, we're, we're, we're excited to bring this forward. We know preemptively we, we need to make sure that the item uh, passes, but we're excited of the opportunity and the potential that such a destination provide the entire city and the effect it'll have on the corridor leading to and from Galveston. Very good. Council, do we have any questions for the CRV group? Mayor, I don't have a question. I just want to remark that for so long, and I'm born, raised in Galveston, and been here for 60 years. Uh, Lamarck has, uh, for for too long, uh, just been on a way to get to Galveston, mm -hmm. but and um, and I've over, been repeating it over and over and over that it it serves a purpose. We, we're here beyond that, yes. and and I applaud you for the vision of finally saying. Um, that, that yes, there is a greater purpose because that causeway will only hold a certain number of, of cars right. going over. That's right. And um, and the island has limited space as well, too. So we're it's an exciting opportunity. I congratulate you. Thank uh, you. We're excited. We appreciate your support. Any any other questions? Else? Certainly we're excited about the opportunity uh, for our community to grow. Those are some impressive numbers. Uh, we're speaking about $39 million over 10 years revenue, uh, eight to 10 open air, multi-level uh, restaurants, a hotel and a convention center. Um, that, that, that is outstanding. Uh, many, many people are astounded at the pace that our city has moved forward. Uh, this is one example of how quickly we were able to recover as a community. Uh, another example that proves that it truly is sunny in Lamarck. Uh, you all have experience in developing uh, properties in places like Lamarck, places that are on, on the coast. And certainly you've done your due diligence. Uh, you've paid your own way. There aren't any uh, incentives in this deal uh, that the city has to uh, negotiate. You all have come in and you've worked with our staff, uh, paid your own way, and you've, you've earned the right now. Which are outstanding, um, by the way. Staff, well, well so we, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. And certainly Mr. Garcia can pass that on to our, our staff. Mm -hmm. But make no mistake about it, this is a great day in Lamar uh, because our economic prowess is starting to surface. It's going to lead to continued reduction of, of tax rates for our uh, residents. Uh, and it's going to provide 592 jobs. And so all around, I, I think it's a great deal for us. Uh, I wanted, Caesar, I wanted you to emphasize, if you would, for our community members, how just how CRV pay their own way and how uh, you uh, representing our community, uh, Gus, I believe, and, and, and CRV work this water, uh, this uh, water service agreement out. Certainly, Mayor, thank you. Um, you know, I've got to give great kudos to the entire CRV team, very responsive. Um, we, we were very quick to get on the phone and get on different calls and make sure that different things were addressed. Any challenge or obstacle we had on, you know, that 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 may have come up. We've uh, been in, in tight discussion with their entire team, um, their their folks, and on their legal team. Obviously, Gus, you've got Miss Kathleen, who's played a role, Rick, and also our engineering team. Then, uh, we're, we're we're excited about getting this going, um, and I want everybody to understand that just because we're doing this tonight doesn't mean that we're going to just have things popping up tomorrow. Um, the underground is something that's that's very critical, but it's been a labor of love that we have enjoyed. Uh, you guys also have been great to work with, and and uh, we 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 thank you for your responsiveness, um, and, and and your interest in selecting the mark amongst many other choices that you could have had. So we're excited for that, and Mayor, and 
and and kudos to the team for um you know taking care of this and also the efforts of our ADC team. Can you can you can you or Rick whomever you uh, designate explain what what this was? They had to we had to increase capacity to the. Uh, Explain a, a little bit about that, please. Certainly. And this might be a, a team effort because I know Den is here and we have Gus and then Rick as well. But essentially, to run a facility like this, obviously, there is a need for utilities. So uh, water and sewer being at the premium. Um, obviously, we cannot have anything. We'd have all the bells and whistles overground, but if we don't have the stuff underground taken care of, then we cannot open the doors. And that's what this particular agreement is about tonight. So in reference to that, that I pretty much summarize that is that about the 30 second version, essentially for everybody. Um, essentially, that's been the need for this agreement. Whatever we have overground does not matter if we don't have our water and our sewer running. And that's what this agreement is the first step to take care of. Very good. We're, we're looking at a full, a, a completed project that about two years out, two to three years out. Um, if there's nothing further, Council, we will certainly entertain a motion to approve. If I may, if Mayor, I'm, just yes, one sir, more thing do. to piggyback on what uh, the city manager has said and you hit on as well. One of the reasons for this agreement is, well, the reason is to provide water service, but one of the reasons for it is they are they are providing, they are building that. The residents right. and the taxpayers are not. Right. And yeah, I, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be emphasized. They're paying their own way. Uh, they they are not asking for any incentives uh, from the city of Lamar, and that's that's uh, that's a remarkable thing to say uh, in these days and times. And so, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I actually, I, I do, Gus. I do have a question. Now that you mentioned it, once the project is completed, ongoing maintenance. Uh, the, what's what's? They are to provide a one year warranty. To the, that once the project is completed, um, just some details of how the project will be completed. Uh, it's going to be reviewed by the city engineer, uh, which is common. Yeah. Um, once it's completed and passes inspection, it'll come back to council. Uh, they will dedicate the facility, the new infrastructure to the city. It will become part of the city's infrastructure. They will provide a one-year maintenance warranty to the city, and then it will be part of the infrastructure as and will be maintained as any other city infrastructure is. Well, Mayor, I'll just repeat. I hope that we can, before then, and Gus, come up with a um our guidance on sidewalks, those things that are mm -hmm. missing uh, from our previous developments that, right. that I've indicated as a gap as well, too. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Welcome to our humble abode. <laughs> Council, let's pick back up item six. Um, we we brought CRV because we thought there may be more discussion, uh, but I think we're all on the same page. Ver, uh, uh, public hearings, item six, uh, conduct public hearing to hear public input on 6-1 ordinance number letter O-2024-0004, issuing a conditional use permit for the construction of a data storage facility, the showroom located uh, at Galveston County property ID number 752487. The, we will close the regular scheduled meeting at? 637. We will open the public hearing at 637. Are there any persons wishing to speak to item 61? Any persons wishing to speak to item 61? Council, let's move to item 62, still in the public hearing. So, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, 61. If I may, if you're the developer, you can speak in the public hearing or you can speak to, the council may choose to call you up for your item. Okay, so yeah. I'll, I'll just wait in the audience. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Uh, item 62, ordinance number letter O-2024-0005, amending the city of Lamarck 2023-2024 budget by increasing various budget accounts, expenditures, and decreasing others, transferring positions to new departments, uh, and increasing decreasing various fund balances as set forth in attached exhibits. Are there any persons wishing to speak to item 6-2? 
Are there any persons wishing to speak to item six two? One more time, are there any persons wishing to speak to item six one or six two? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing at 6.38. And we'll reopen the regular meeting. Uh, we'll move to item seven, old business. Uh, 7 1 ordinance number letter 0 2024 0004, issuing a conditional use permit for construction of a data storage facility and showroom located at Galveston County property ID number 752487. This is the second and final reading. You may approach, sir, if you like. Uh, is there something that you would like to add tonight or are you here available for questioning? I'm here for, for questions. Good evening, everyone. Very good. Very good. Uh, I will counsel entertain a motion on item 7-1. Move to <clears throat> approve the conditional use permit for the construction of that storage facility. In showroom located in Galveston County property ID 752487. Is that a second? Second. Any discussion? I just want to say thank you for actually when asked to provide all the information that you were quick, got here fast, did all the reading. I was able to look at the different um different dielectric fluids that you use. And I greatly appreciate that. That was that was all I needed from you. Thank you. Any further dis discussion? Uh, certainly, we want to uh, point out that this uh, this uh, data storage facility will be the first like it in Texas. Uh, that it potentially uh, will add uh, twenty million dollars potentially to the ad valorem uh, uh, tax. Uh, potentially will add over $350 million, excuse me, I wish, $350,000 of sales tax, uh, all uh, in an effort to relieve, to further relieve the burden on our uh, residential property tax owners. And so if there, there's nothing further, we'll, uh, we won't beat this dead horse. Melanie will call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Very good. Seven, two. Ordinance number letter O-2024-0005, amending the City of Lamarck 2023-2024 budget by increasing various uh, budget accounts, expenditures, decreasing others, uh, transferring positions to new departments, and increasing, decreasing various fund balances as set forth in attached exhibits. Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. We brought this item back um, as is. It did pass at the last meeting with the amendments. What we've done is we've removed the amendments that did not pass and I resubmitted the other uh, amendments for your consideration tonight. Uh, we, we're willing to entertain any questions. Our finance director is also here. Anything you may need for us to address. Very good. Are we taking these care as a, care as a whole tonight? Okay. And so let me just get this out the way. Um, I am going to vote no uh, simply because. I don't feel comfortable with the idea of adding new positions uh, without this being a budget process. I do respect what you're doing. I do understand. And I understand that my colleagues may vote in favor. I have no problem with that. Uh, but I just wanted to make just just make a point in in this should perhaps be done in our budget workshop. Do get what you're doing. Do understand it totally. Uh, anything else? Kara, do we have a motion in the second? Yet, yeah. I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. The second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was unexpected. All right, let's do this again. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's two. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Budget amendment fails. I uh, guess we have to go back to the drawing board on that one, Caesar, uh, and bring it back to us. Certainly, I would find out if I were you. Uh, we could do it right here. I, I gave my reason. Uh, Ms. Allred, Mr. Ross, are you prepared to uh, direct Mr. Um, Mr. Garcia as he brings this back? I'm, I'm willing to talk about this. I mentioned last time we brought it that 
the grant administrator wasn't something I was ready to bring up and pay for at this moment in time. It was project administrator next budget cycle, a grant administrator. I agree with that. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, and I don't know if this is rightfully a point of order, but the first time we considered this, we did it on an individual basis, yes, position sir. by position. And now we're taking it as a whole. And that, when it, when you mentioned it, it just struck me as odd. Uh, so the reason why was because during the first reading, huh. it was just the first reading, and it could still be amended. At this point, it is one. This would be the final reading of the ordinance, so it would be taken as written. Does that make sense? No, it could still be taken individually. Correct us. Well, if you remove anything out of it, it would be considered a substantial change, and therefore, and we had to start over. Yeah, I think we did that. We and voted yeah. on each one. I, I, I don't think Mayor Pro Tem has a problem with starting over. He's just simply more concerned right. with actually okay. passing the parts that council agrees with. Agrees with. Right. Yeah, even if we have to start over, that's that's fine. Okay. Uh, let, let's take this again. Uh, Council, do we want Mr. Garcia to bring this back with the with the changes or do we want to change them tonight? If we change them tonight, this will, in essence, Kiara, correct me if I'm wrong, become the first reading again. That's no problem. Uh, we're just making sure that we're all aware. Council, what's your pleasure? Do we want Caesar to bring it back or do we want to change it tonight? <clears throat> I'm good with everything except for the grant administrator. One hundred percent. I agree with Miss Allred there. That I was, will. But that already passed. I thought. Now that, that was the first reading. Oh, that's the first, the first reading. reading, and and so uh, I will entertain a motion then, um, and I'll split the difference with you all to to in it so that we can be unified. I will entertain a motion to approve this as a first reading without the grant administrator. I do see the need for a project uh, coordinator. Uh, a desperate need for that with all of the grant funding. Uh, I will entertain a motion to approve uh, this uh, ordinance without the grant administrator. That's so moved. Is there a second? Second. Let the record reflect this is now the first reading. Is that right, Kiara? Uh, we will uh, call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Very good. Item 7-3 proposed ordinance amending the city of Lamarck 2023-2024 budget by allocating American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds. Mr. Garcia, certainly there has been some discussion with council and you have made some significant changes. Certainly. If you give me a moment, let me ask Paul to put that up so we can share it on the screen. Um, what we did is we took note of all the different things that were requested. Um, from, from council and all the uh, items that were necessary and figured out the best way we can make them all fit. I believe all of you have a, print. obviously it's in the agenda, but also you also, most of you have a copy of your printout. Yes, please, thank you. Have a copy of your printout of, of your notes as well. So at this time what we have that you'll see is what the original uh, request was. And what I'd like to do so we can do it here in open forum is for you guys to make motions or suggested changes of what you'd like to remove collectively here, and we can quickly go with any discussion items that you all may desire. Who wants to uh, uh, go first? Just uh, Mayor, uh, Mr. City Manager, I need some clarification. Do you have a list of all the items that, that there was consensus on? There was not enough consensus on any items outside of the norm from what was here. There were only a few minor suggestions. One of the suggestions that was made, the only consensus item that there was, was definitely putting more of an emphasis on street repair. That was the biggest consensus that existed. The thought was for us to take up to $1 million away from the 1.5 designated towards water and sewer repairs and, and designate those to to the street repairs. That's the biggest consensus item that exists as of right now, Mayor Pro Tem. So, so, so as it as it sits, our street uh, repair allocation is at about seventy five thousand yes, dollars. What you have uh, proposed uh, to us, uh, I believe individually, 
uh, is to move, and I need you to 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 justify this, to move uh, the water sewer repair line item for fiscal year 25, that million dollars, and the GLO grant matches for fiscal year 26, that 500 roughly. No, I'm, may, may okay, help, me, help me to understand. Only the one million, the five sixty. We would still like to keep those as potential okay. matches. Okay, okay. Yes, Mayor. So you want to move the one million from water and sewer repair into the street repair budget? And how will you? What will you replace those funds with? Certainly, uh, one of the changes that we talked about, as we mentioned, uh, maybe dating myself here, maybe going back six or seven months. One of the things that we were um, hopeful of is that our relationship with uh, Republic Services would be able to, in one way, shape, or form, uh, be able to help us with some of our street repair. Yes. We, 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 mm -hmm. we discussed the probability of that happening. Conservatively, we feel comfortable that we could raise three to $400,000 per year from, from that relationship at a minimum. Um, and to conservatively do that over the course of the next three years, being FY24, FY25, and FY26, we feel comfortable and confident today as we speak that we'll be able to absorb that $1 million of potential um, repairs that we had allotted to cover from the overage of the bond allocation that we had at the time, that we had not yet seen the lived the fruit, if you will, of the um, payments that made through Republic for the actual discharge. Uh, we are in position now, we are on track uh, to have enough of an overage where we can start making some of these payments out of that fund. And it does allow us where we could not use Republic funds for street projects, we can use Republic funds for our water and sewer projects, which is what this overage was uh, intending to cover. Okay. So, so these are ARPA funds and these ARPA funds can be used for street repair. Yes, they yes, can. Mayor. So we were directing them toward water and sewer because of the desperate need we had for water and sewer. Correct. The potential contract that we have with Republic to do what now? Help me to understand what we're doing with Republic. The Republic contract is one where we're accepting discharge. It, it, it was not allowed, uh, it was not projected to be in the budget because at the time of the passing of the agreement, it was past the budget season that we had gone through. So we could not bank on that unless the item would have come forward to all of you and passed. So as a result, now today, after now six months of review, which we brought to you uh, th through through our last um, projection when we brought to you the budget amendments, we feel strong enough now that we are on pace to receive three to $400,000 per year to cover said, said expenses. So that this million will go to streets in your proposal, and then the the uh, uh, revenue from Republic from from their discharge, uh, three to four hundred per year. So in three years, we should make this difference up. Correct. What was these? What was this? Uh, uh, these funds, this million dollars. What was it actually earmarked for? So if you remember the bond allocation sheet. There was a agreement that was made with, uh, or excuse me, not agreement, I apologize. There was a bond allocation for the wastewater treatment plant um, from those bond dollars. Unfortunately, the bond dollars were not sufficient to cover the entire, covered the entire amount, which would have netted in roughly a $1 million shortage. So that's the project that we know we needed. We had been advised by TCQ to make sure we had to repair the actual current wastewater treatment facility plant, but we still need to do it anyways was roughly $1 million of surplus that we would have needed, that we were short. So that's where the $1 million were allocated to go through from your original bond allocation. Very good. Uh, go ahead, Jim. And, 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 and let's forget about the American Rescue Plan dollars. In a normal year, year allocation, as historically the city of Lamarck has done, that money necessary to complete the the wastewater, I think you described it as right. The, yes, the sewer or plant. It's it's that actually for a bar screen, but okay. yes, that bar. I, mm -hmm. I I remember it now. That would have come from our general funds anyway. Either general that, funds or, in this the, case, utility funds. Or the utility, they would have come from there because it, that's historically how we've met that. We should and yes. and 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 what you're saying though is that. Um, we're under um, a requirement to get that 
corrected because yes, we had certain deficiencies. Yes. And so in a normal uh, course of business, we would still be obligated to do that. Let's regardless for, regardless of the American rescue plan. Correct. So let, let me let me ask this, and Mayor, if you permit me this. If if I understand this this uh sheet on top, I guess everybody's looking at the same one. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, the this this recommendation here based upon the feedback and your discussions with all of us. Uh, for so street repair, that allocation now would be one point five seven one million five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. As of right now, with the one recommendation that was yeah. made that we had consensus, it'd be one million seventy five thousand. One million seventy five. Yes. Correct, this, because this. it would not be allocated in the five sixty. The five sixty we still need for the matching grant for the GLO projects. Well, this this says five. I it believe on say, yours, you had another possible allocation that you wanted to try to change, but you told me on the ones that there was consent. Oh, well, I, well, I, I didn't. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not looking at the sheet everybody else has. Then. You, you no, should have two uh, sheets. You have two sheets in your hands, if I'm not mistaken. What is that sheet? I don't have it. It's because that's his allocation of sheets. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Water, sewer, so street. Is it? The one the in the the package is the one. Oh, so it's one million. You took the seventy-five thousand, and just added a million to that. Yes, Mayor Potter. That's that, and um, and you in in this, I, and then we have, I guess we all had consensus on the GLO grant match. Yes, sir. Correct. Yes, sir. Which was the five hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Yes, sir. That, there is consensus there. And did we all have consensus on the importance of the the finance the software? The yes. four hundred and eighty-five thousand. Yes, Mayor. There was some question there with regard to that amount, though. Yes, right? that was question from from, yeah. from you actually, as, as far if, as the if that was not an excessive amount. Correct. And did you get any feedback or no, sir? Everybody, that? everybody for the most part has. has no, no, that was that it. Item. Okay. The only item that was a consensus for change um, from just basic notes was just the fact that um, everybody wanted to put more money towards streets. For towards streets. Mm -hmm. And in in that, um, in I guess, let me see this one here public. So what we still have in this one, and, and Mayor, I think I spoke to it last time too, weren't, as we approach the public station construction, weren't we saying that all of that should be put to the vote yeah. and, and that should be a bond? As yeah. a, and so we're still showing half a million dollars here for that. Certainly, Mayor Pro Tem. And, if, and, if and I guess that's where I was taking that half a million correct. and putting it into the street. Yes. The if, street. If, if, if that's the will of the council, we're ready to do whatever we need to do. That I that now I understand. That's where I was looking at that because I I, I firmly believe it that as the discussion has has occurred with regard to we should have a a a first class public safety building. This is police station, but a first class public safety building, and let's let the residents and citizens that, mm -hmm. decide that via bond referendum, especially with the activity that we have in terms of developments. It kind of changes our our financial picture as well too, in terms of, of what we can and cannot do without a tax increase and, uh, and those numbers. So that's all that in, as your numbers here, I was also suggest that we don't spend anything on that police station, the public safety, the half a million and put that to the street. Uh, now, having said the street, I, I did say this, um, there's two streets and I think they're on the agenda here later, we're all, and I'm not trying to pick on you, uh, Councilman Priancy, but they were, uh, I, for some reason, you said, oh, those are the first two streets we heard about. I'm going to say no. I've been <laughs> talking many years back on other streets. But those two streets were in Council Member uh, District A. And I want some equity with regard to to yes, that. Absolutely, that. Mayor Potem. And when that item comes up, uh, I, I see Din, who is our engineer, and Rick, our public works director, the three of us will address that item. And then the, the only other thing that on my sheet, um, my fellow members of council, but um, apparently Cesar also was 
I, as other communities have done, it began by Fort Bend County doing this. Fort Bend County took, uh, well, they took actually some half a million dollars of their American Rescue Fund dollars, which now everybody's aboard, regardless of your political, uh, <laughs> even if you voted against it, everybody's uh, utilizing the dollars. But um, they, um, they uh, directed it to an effort by the Houston Galveston Area Council to start offering micro loans for businesses. And it was fully, it's fully administered by the Houston Galveston Area Council um, under a low interest loan program. And um, I suggested 50,000 and Cesar, as, as you ran the numbers with Ms. Turner and others, you were able to also come up with the 50,000, but it had to do with interest that was being earned. Is that accurate? Correct. Um, what ARPA allows you to do is um, any, any funds that are incurred through interest from from the actual fund sitting in your account is not subject to the same federal scrutiny that is that is done through all the other ARPA funds, uh, procurement and so forth. So as long as it is obviously will be audited and will be financially sought, um, that is a qualifiable expense uh, to do so. Uh, although I do recommend the the, the amount of, of being about fifty thousand dollars because conservatively we don't know where we're going to end up. Obviously in the next year with the interest of where we are. Right. So um, that would be my recommendation. Well, Council, that's all I my, yeah. my thoughts there on that side with regard to these numbers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any further uh, discussion? All right. So I know when I went in, the big thing for me was to make sure we got the finance software and the water usage client software started now. If we have twelve months. 12 to 18 months, we'll just go with 18 months. If we wait until next fiscal year, come October, we're down to 12 months. So let's start that process now. Let's get our budget or get our software through that and all that done today, preferably. Um, <clears throat> and Councilman, if, if I can, uh, one of the things that assuming when we're ready to pass this uh, after two readings that we're ready to go on this, uh, you will see immediate procurement a lot of these items. And the reason for that is just as such, we want to allocate whatever is necessary as soon as possible so that if just in case we need to make a separate allocation of some things that we're able to find for less or more, and we can do so properly before 24 ends and properly procure them so that we don't have to worry about the long term effect. Mm -hmm. That's, that'll be great. Um, the next was we wanted to make sure the flock cameras got out. We got take, that taken care of. And then anything the fire department had down there because safety of our citizens. And if you've never been in a fire trainer or had to use a thermal imager to go find a body somewhere, that's kind of important. You can see that heat signature through walls and stuff. Find out if there's still something smoldering there rather keep our citizens in their houses safe sure. period and then the street light conversion i would like to get that done and started now also mentioned that any of the any of the stuff that was equipment wise unless we had somebody that could actually use it or was going to be finished with the training for it to move that off and save that until we have that person already there because don't want to spend a hundred and some odd grand on a pothole trailer, if nobody knows exactly what to do, or for the asphalt zipper, if nobody knows how to use it, don't want to have another piece of equipment that just sits there. And then water and sewer always before the street repair, because I'd rather fix everything below the street than have to rip the street back up to fix it again. Certainly. And Councilman, that brought to a great point. And again, we talked about consensus and so forth. One of the things that came up in some of the conversations was uh, the fact that we do have three ambulance remounts uh, and we only have one budgeted at this time. The thought was maybe budgeting a second one. I know, you know, you, right. you, 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 you showed support for that uh, as well as, uh, you know, like another person um, from this council. So if it's the will to change that in any which way, then we could do so at this time. We wanted to present you a consolidated package for your first reading tonight um, so we can move this item forward. Um, I go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Michelle. So, um, the stonewall ground storage tank, what did we decide on that? You know, we talked about the, the, about removing the tank. 
Sure. Yes, ma'am. The Stonewall tank. That's, that's the Stonewall that. storage tank, the ground storage tank to remove that tank is roughly $150,000 is what it costs to remove that tank as, as, as of right now. Okay. That's not included. In it's not included at this time. Look at, okay. Because that's been a, you know, let the record reflect, I've asked for that. And that's been a huge point of discontentment in that particular neighborhood because of the drainage issues and mosquitoes. And um, the residents have requested for years for that to be removed. So I would like to ask your staff to um, see what we can do to get that removed, either by grant form or some art or, or interest something because they have had to endure um that's one of the first things that i heard when coming up on the council was about that that tank which it may be something that epa could probably look at as well and they yeah. i don't know if you know they just allotted billions of dollars for through the epa office so maybe that's a grant we can find to get rid of it that way so as my colleague uh, Joe said about the streets, Jefferson Street and Brown Street, Jefferson and Brown, Jefferson and Brown, Dan, where are you? There you go. Those are the streets. You said that they're going to talk about that? We have an item on the agenda okay. later tonight where we're going to address that. Okay. So that's all I have, Mary. Thank you. Ms. Allred, you good? I'm good. Uh, season. Yes, sir. I, I agree. Uh, the the uh, capital improvement uh, committee, I believe it was the third or fourth item on the list was street repair. Uh, and so I am in total agreement that we uh, move those million dollars from water and sewer repair to street repair, provided that we know that we will be able to recoup those monies. Um, Mayor Pro Tem brought up an interesting uh, point as it relates to the police station construction. Um, I think that we have to send a message uh, as a council if, if uh, this is the way that we wanna go. Um, I personally believe uh, in the idea as mayor that we don't uh, incur uh, any debt, uh, any major debt unless it's voter approved. We do have to uh, have uh, fire trucks and things of that nature and, and software systems, uh, but, but major debt, major infrastructure improvements, uh, I believe that they all should be voter approved. Uh, and if Mayor Pro Tem is suggesting, which I've suggested before, that we allow our citizens to decide. Uh, I believe that uh, we should do that. Uh, we should uh, allow our citizens to vote on a public safety building or whatever, whatever this Lamarck 2050 plan uh, will recommend. Uh, here's, my, here's my concern for council, for the city manager. Um, if these monies are moved out of this police station construction, line item, do the people have our word? Do the men and women of the Lamarck Police Department have our word, Council, that we will provide an opportunity for our community to vote uh, on their facilities? If the community has our word that we would work together to call for a vote, uh, an election outside of this Council, then that's a very different discussion. Uh, until uh, I know, I believe that uh, the community can trust our word, not that we're not trustworthy, but we want to emphasize that. Now, then I feel heartburn in moving those funds, but I'm willing to do that. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem suggested that he's willing to provide uh, this to the community at some point. And so as we as we think about that, that would be my uh, my deal breaker on that uh, on that line item. I wanted to ask you, Caesar. Um, I know that there is a grant uh, uh, that has been submitted on behalf of the fire department. Some of these things in the fire department total uh, uh, 
some of these things I believe we've applied for in uh, grant funding. Is that correct? Yes, Mayor, that is correct. Could you help me refresh me while I'm while absolutely? I'm um, I believe if you look down where fire begins, just about everything on that list recommended for fire, except for the ambulance remount, is on there. However, we will not get a result on the on those funds until um, probably midsummer, before we hear back whether we've been funded or not. Okay, so um, if we, Mayor, if if, if I yes, can, if we yes, are sir. funded, then at that time we would come back to you and say, hey, everybody, since you've already supported, for example, remounts two and three, but we didn't have the funds available at that time, would you now allow us to reallocate those funds, and we can do so at that time? So, so I would be willing certainly to wait on that, with the exception of two, Life Pack. Uh, every city facility should have an AED. Uh, they have proven themselves to be lifesavers. Uh, I don't think that we should wait one second, uh, most certainly not until fiscal year 25, to, to get our folks the life-saving help that they need, uh, as well as thermal images. Uh, being, being a firefighter myself, I realize how important those were to me being able to do my job uh, and how many times uh, that a uh, particular piece of equipment kept me out of harm's way. Those two things, I, I think that we we should be able to find a way to fund sooner rather than later. Um, we can always, if we get the grant, those monies could be reallocated. Reallocated is that correct? That would be correct, Mayor. We 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 would be able to move in that direction. The other issue is, um, we had a rebate because we didn't use as much water as we bought. And the rebate was what, 100 some odd thousand dollars. 175, yes. Right. Um, you and I had a conversation and you suggested to me that you wanted to see if there was a trend. And so while there is a surplus, you may not be recommending any water rate cut so that we can see if this will continue. Is that correct? That is correct, Mayor. At this time, I recommend that we watch the trend and see where we're headed. Uh, continue the efforts of our public works department addressing some of the leaks and seeing how much more we could hopefully uh, reduce that as, as well moving forward. So then if that's true, would it be possible to not just bank rebates, but to put those rebates into good use, for example, uh, by acquiring this water usage client software, I believe Mr. Ross is suggesting that we acquire? That is one of the items that we're eyeing. Uh, we would need probably another 90 days to reflect. But yes, that is one of the items that we're looking to accommodate through that expense. Okay. Any chance at all of reducing uh, our, uh, and this, this is a yes or no? Sure. Uh, our uh, individual obligations to uh, to waste management. Trash rates, any any chance at having those reduced? Don't quote me on the month that they're this up. Is, this is from a constituent. I, so I'm relaying this question to you. Certainly, I have to look into that, Mayor. I'm sorry. I, I okay, it's okay, it's okay. Council, do we have any more questions for the city manager? Uh, Mayor, just one, one of the items you touched upon with regard to the public safety and and making a commitment to the community and our residents with regard to yes, sir. the public safety building and, and and a bond. I'm I'm personally willing to commit after the we get through the elections, right? Sure, absolutely. And uh, I mean, I'll I'll preface yeah. it with that is to uh, uh, go ahead and and work with staff and to bring back to this council actually. A, a bond recommendation right. uh, for the construction of that of that building. Right. I am willing to commit to that right. as part of the process. Let's be clear before we ask Kiara to uh, uh, read us into the changes we've made. Uh, this council is uh, suggesting that there will be a possible bond election. That's it. Yeah. That's it. No commit. No commitment to uh, any debt uh, outside outside of. Uh, the city of Lamarck having an election and the voters approving that debt. That's all we're saying. 
we're giving the opportunity perhaps for our community to vote on whether or not we want to incur the debt of a new public safety building. Kira, we had some changes made to the uh, ARPA list. Um, are they significant enough to warrant us doing this all over again? Well, this is a first reading. First reading, very good. So if you want to make changes now would be the time, but I would need us to, uh, cons I have, I have what each of you wanted, but I don't know that we've agreed. I got you. Let's let's do this. Let's entertain a motion to approve so that we can start adding our amendments. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Well, so moved. Is that a second? I'll second that. Very good. Mr. Compion made uh, an amendment. He will, I'm sure, uh, make the motion for, but I believe it was to move the uh, million dollars out of the water and sewer repair line into the street repair line. Yes. Because we have a motion on the floor. Do we want to pull that motion, make the amendments, and then approve it? Well, that's this is the... going to be the amendment. Okay, this yeah. is the Yeah, he's amendment. gonna yeah, okay. yeah. I'm I, I I said it so that he can agree with it to make sure we're on the same page. Yes. Okay. So he's probably gonna make that amendment motion right about no. <laughs> is that a second? Is that a second to the amendment? to move $1 million out of our water and sewer line item into our street repair line item. Is there a second? Uh, Councilman Ross seconded it. Did you, I'm sorry. I'll I'm sorry, James. That, but I have a question. Absolutely. Uh, now we are in discussion only on the amendment. Right. Go ahead, James. Correct. Um, how exactly are we going to put that million dollars back into water and sewer? Because I'm a firm believer of we start below the street and work our way up to it. So how are we going to... How was, what is our plan to recoup that million? Um, yeah, certainly, Councilman. So that says water and sewer as a description, but the majority and almost all of that was to cover the overage for our wastewater treatment plant bar screen. So it was way more sewer than that, than, than water. And so the way we interpret to do that is using the same sewage revenue that we have now that we had not realized or that would, would have materialized come last budget year through our Republic discharge to pay for that expense. I understand. Thank you. Over the course of three years. Thank you. And, and, and just to add, uh, Council Member, is that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, that um, Republic income in past years was approximately a million dollars, correct? Uh, I can't speak to that as to what it was, but we're projected to be between three and four hundred thousand dollars a year. Three or four hundred a year. Yeah, that's what's, what was brought to you, and that's what it's on track to to actually be. I think if you go back and look at the records, and I'll, I have the records. Sure, it was a million dollars. Certainly. Any further discussion on the amendment? Let's vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The amendment is now part of the original ordinance. Are there any other amendments tonight? I'd like to offer an amendment that we move uh, that we move the life pack city facility AEDs from fiscal year 25 to fiscal year 24, and the thermal images for the fire department from fiscal year 25 to fiscal year 24. I have made that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any discussion on this amendment? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That is now added to the original uh, ordinance. Are there any other amendments that council seeks to offer at this time? Well, I think the other amendment that I was thinking about was then moving consistent with our comments with a First class public safety building and letting the residents decide that on a bond is moving that half a million once again to street repairs. Um, and, uh, and that's, I had previously discussed that as well. Okay. The amendment, uh, this, the third amendment made to this uh, ordinance uh, is to move the $500,000 out of the police station construction 
line item into the street line item. Is there a second? I will second that and also like to add that, Mr. Compion, I would love to help you make. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So so I've got a little heartburn about that. We have the farm discussion. Uh, Mr. Ross has seconded. We are now in discussion. Okay. So so what happens, you know, uh, if the voters say no, and then they're stuck in those facilities? I mean, I mean, as a proud member of the Lamarck Citizen Police Academy, we want to make sure that our, our officers have what they need. And we know that's been a big point of contention um, that, that, you know, we, we were able to do that through, I believe y'all, you guys did with the CO bond, right? And we built a fire station, and that didn't require a vote. Um, and why, why, why do we have to go through this? Is is it the climate that we're in? I mean, I'm just asking the, because the, I'm the just, general obligation bond. Well, I know you all funded it with the CO bond. So why why we have to do the station this way purpose. and not the other way? Right. Because of the sheer cost of the station. The the, the fire station, I believe. Uh, who I'm looking for someone who was here. I believe we were at six million. Dan was there. Dan. About six. about six million, and so so council can approve up to five million, uh, I, I believe in 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 a uh, in a certificates of obligation. Um, I don't know that number off yeah. the top of my head, Mary. It, it, it's a smaller number that that we can approve in certificates of obligation. Uh, the sheer size of the police station, the public safety building, the numbers were thirteen, fifteen, seventeen million dollars. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was higher, okay. and so yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's that's why. That okay. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that, yes, that, that we understood that because I don't want to send a message that we're not trying to Absolutely. change that. So. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. So it's, it's significantly higher than what we can do. Yes, ma'am. For ourselves. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm good. Any further comments or questions on uh, the Third Amendment? Um, again, I, I respect what we are trying to do. I do also have heartburn uh, with, uh, along with uh, uh, Ms. Yancey, um, with the idea that the voters may not approve uh, a new public safety building. I believe, I hope that we would, uh, but uh, there has not been a bond passed in Lamarck in, oh my goodness, before I was here. <laughs> Maybe even before, before Mayor Pro Tem was here. And so that's the dangerous ground. Again, I will uh, go along with whatever the majority of council decides, but that is heartburn. Any further questions on the amendment? I'm hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Let the uh, amendment, uh, let the record reflect that the $500,000 was moved from the police, uh, the police building construction a line item to the street repair line item. Any uh, further amendments to be offered at this time? Hearing none, we will take the we will we will allow Kiara to read us the changes, and we will take the. Uh, Sorry, we have one uh, amendment we would like for okay. council to make, and it's just regarding the enacting clause. Um, this ordinance. It's taken a little bit longer than we expected it to um, because we did not initially put an enacting timeline on it. Um, our charter says that it will be enacted 30 days after its passage, um, which kind of puts us in a little bit of a time constraint. So if we could have council uh, make an amendment to say that um, this ordinance will be um, enacted immediately upon passing, it'll help us get this ball rolling a little bit faster. Is that standard? Is that normal, Gus? <laughs> That that's perfectly fine. Um, the council routinely passes ordinances that um, say they're effective immediately. And th what Kier is referring to, the charter says it's effective when council says it's effective, unless council doesn't say, and then it's thirty days after final passage. Okay, so. very good. Who wants to offer that amendment? I'll, I'll offer it, but with the clear, just yes, sir. I just want to confirm this is a first reading, though. Correct. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, so move. Is there a second? Second. I don't believe we need to discuss that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is the fourth amendment. Kier, would you then uh, read the four amendments back? Um, the first 
amendment is uh, to move uh, the million dollar allocation from water and sewer to streets. The second amendment is to move the, the allocations for the life pack AEDs and thermal imagers um, from allocate from the fiscal year 25 to fiscal year 24 allegations. Um, the third amendment is to uh, remove the $500,000 that was designated to the um, public safety building or the police department construction um, into street repairs. And then the fourth is just to say that this is going to be effective immediately upon passing. Very good. Any further discussion, Council, on item 7-3? There's nothing further. I will entertain a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hold on. I don't have a, a final uh, motion in second. Because you have to read it again. No, no, nobody. Uh, I don't have a motion to approve all of that and oh. move forward. Okay. Um, I thought we approved we're, each we're, amendment. We approved in the first reading. Don't they have to do one to it? So do you need us to approve the ordinance? With approve it as a whole. Yes. We, we do yeah. that. We, we can do that. The amendment. Correct. Yes. Yeah. The we amendments were to allow council to make their will known and then pass the ordinance as a Very good. Who wants to do that to clean this up? Joe? The, the mayor, I'll, I move that we approve these allocations under the American Rescue uh, Plan um, with the amendments as as agreed upon. Is there a second? Second. If there's no further discussion, I will in entertain the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item eight. New business, 8-1, proposed ordinance, amending the city's zoning map and comprehensive plan by changing zoning, the zoning uh, for a district, the zoning district for attractive land identified as Galveston County, Central Appraisal District Parcel ID 131373 and 131374, located near FM 519 and east of Newman Road. Uh, are the developers of this property present with us tonight? They are, Mayor. Hello, I'm sir. How are you? Now. Also, uh, Kathleen is available for questions. I think she's still here. There she is. Should we have any questions? Uh, this item has already gone to planning and zoning and already passed at the last meeting there. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. If you would like to introduce yourself, uh, your company, and your project to our community, you have the floor. Happy to do so. Thank you, uh, City Council and staff, uh, for being here this evening. Uh, my name is Brad Schweitzer with EHRA Engineering. Uh, I am the lead land planner on this project, and I'm here on behalf of the developer Century Communities. Uh, so we're proposing a community of roughly 128 lots uh, on this 46-acre parcel. Um, the Pretty much the only deviation from the current zoning is going uh, from 60-foot wide lots to 50-foot wide lots. The overall lot size, 6,300 square feet, still still the same requirement. Uh, and we're in exchange for this, we're providing enhanced amenity package the half mile loop uh, on the south side of the property back into the bayou with a fishing pier, uh, five foot wide sidewalks maintained by the HOA. Um, like Caesar mentioned, uh, this was approved by uh, PNZ. So uh, we're a lively debate and lots of discussion. And uh, hopefully we addressed all of the questions, uh, but I'm here to answer any questions that you guys might have. We are we are looking. We're excited to be started. Provide some some homes for the new uh, crossroads <laughs> employee. For the new for the new restaurants out of crossroads, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It sounds like I'll need more. So, um, so so how many homes total? One hundred and twenty-eight right now. And I think the maximum uh, as a condition by uh, planning commission was one hundred and thirty-eight. So I I don't foresee this land plan changing at this point, but it could flex a little bit as we get into the engineering. Who's the build, builder? Century Communities. And they, they are involved in other projects in this area. I'm not exactly sure you know, if they're in Lamarck right now, but I know they're in Galveston County. Okay. Council, do we have any questions uh, for this developer? What district, uh, Kathleen? This is in District B, right? Which I'm, that is uh, the crossing right there. The bottom left intersection there would be Main Street and Newman Road. And uh, uh, so what you see to the left is what 519. 
And then to the right or the back where the uh, open park space is would be the bayou. So all, all the green spaces is the, well, what I was reading in the documents is that you've uh, designated that as the, as the park area. Open yeah. parkland. Yeah, we have play, more like program playground area in the middle of the community. And then the south side is that more that passive with the trail around the mitigation basin for drainage mm -hmm. purposes. And that's maintained, that park is maintained by the HOA. Yes. It's not uh, diverting to no. us. No? no. Yeah, I haven't seen a plat where they're offering it okay. for dedication to the city. Okay. Yeah, if the city's interested, I mean, <laughs> no, <laughs> there have been some always questions on some of these things. So I just want to make it clear for the record that you're maintaining the yeah. park area. But it'll be a mud slash HOA. Okay. I don't know. All right. Is and, this part of the that water district thing too? Like is that this area? The, um, the mud. The mud. It is a, it will be in a mud, and that's an upcoming item yeah. to oh, be. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's not that's not that what you're hearing tonight. No, it's, it's not but that is not before the council tonight. Okay. okay. Well, welcome to District B. I can help anyway. Any further questions? Um, Caesar, sir. In our uh, in our packet, there was a couple of uh, residents that had some uh, heartburn. Um, looks like there are potentially sewer issues uh, out in that vicinity of town. Uh, there are issues with street repair uh as well as a um uh, interest in a drainage in a drainage plan can you speak to uh, in particular uh the issues of our sewer system and how we are addressing them or how we will address them uh, as well as well you don't need to speak to the street repair plan we have a we have a plan in place and we've just allocated dollars but could you speak to really? the sewer issue Absolutely. And I see uh, Den here. So if Den would like to help me explain this, but essentially a lot of those uh, requests were addressed as part of this plan. Uh, several things that came up as, as you mentioned, drainage, for example. So the open play space area that is to your right of the screen there now uh, is open play space that would also serve as a additional uh, drainage area should the need arise. Obviously a uh, location such as this would need its own uh, viability as far as water and sewer. So certainly uh, sewer would be addressed as part of this. And coincidentally, the plan is if, if you know, we could get this properly like engineered the right way that we hope to, is that the entire area would also benefit from, from, from these infrastructure upgrades. And I'll ask Dan to chime in on that. Uh, so we have looked at this uh, plan and the site with the public works. Yeah, their existing pump line facility for a sanitary pump line is just to to east of the site. The discharge would be would be going directly into that line. It would not impact the adjacent neighbor. We understand there has been issues with sewer uh, in this older neighborhood because of the way it's built. It's in a low lying area, so that will be addressed uh, through public works as a separate item. The, this particular site will not drain into or a discharge into that the site. This will discharge directly into the the trunk line uh, facility. We're still working through. If this is approved uh, today, uh, the city would uh, our staff would work with the developer, their engineer, to to make sure that uh, it does not impact the adjacent. As far as the water line, there's a large water line on FM 519. Um, this area, the sewer line, the uh, drainage line, uh, portions of this track is in the floodplain. Uh, there will be mitigation that will be required as part of the flood mitigation will be required and it will directly discharge into the island body. Uh, the, the improvements that you'll see is the site will be contained internally by storm sewer and will not be able to sheet flow into the adjacent neighborhood. It'll be directly directed 
directly directly into the, the green space and directly to bottom body. So there won't be any overflow coming from uh, to the adjacent neighborhood. So it can self contain. And uh, Mayor, if I can, uh, this item came to planning and zoning twice. Uh, public hearing was was uh, what what public meeting was held where the residents were invited to to attend. Uh, we had a pretty good showing. Um, their concerns were heard. We went back to the drawing board, brought this back again to make sure that the item passed. And a testament to Kathleen and her staff, engineering, all that works, and then also to the developer to address the concerns of the residents. So, so we. Did the residents leave satisfied with the new changes? They have a, they had a better understanding. Their concern was the drainage sheet going to, to their to their property, which it currently does. It kind of sheet goes east and west. But with the development, the storm sewer that's being proposed, it'll be consolidated and drained directly in, into the body. Taking the way that drainage that typically goes into Newman or through the Duro, mm -hmm. it'll be contained within the development and then she flowing directly, uh, she flowing by conduit directly into hot body. So you're not going to have the, the spread of the water coming into Newman Road, which is typically mm -hmm. uh, is yeah. Yeah. But, right, right. So you're basically taking that away okay. uh, from going into the roadside edge. Along the addition, some uh, excess capacity or additional capacity that was uh, was there before. Um, so, are you saying that this new infrastructure will actually help yes. Newman, Newman Road and, and their drain and their and the current drainage? So that impacts District A. So, Not that side of Newman Road. It's no, the right. Side of the road. right. I, I know, but it but it still kind of floods too. That's what I'm. I'm just asking no. because uh, so I got two church members that live on that side of Newman yes. too. So that actually. Uh, it, there won't be any sheet flow directly east and west of the site. It'll be all contained within the, within the development and then sheet flow and then connected in, directly into the house body. So it's not going to spread like it normally would right. because it's the way it, it's naturally uh, laid out right now. Everything will be contained in there and directly right. away from the adjacent neighborhood. Um, one of the other concerns was, um, as Mayor pointed out, was the steward of issues. This area, because of this low line, was developed years ago before the any planned infrastructure was a smart board of um, uh, grind pumps and the elevated um, sanitary sewer landfill. They've had issues in the past, and I you know public works are not looked at it and uh, we're developing a project to correct a lot of that issue. But the sewer system will not connect to their system uh, to the to the west. It will direct connect directly into the main pump line, there, thereby not impacting the network. One, one of the other things was the width of the street and the the health and the condition of the street, uh, as well as one resident maybe more than one but but i remember i remember reading one resident even suggested the amount of traffic the majority of the traffic that they submitted as traffic impact analysis the majority of the traffic will will go directly on Pop 19. there will be some overflow traffic going into newman directly yeah the, uh, if you could see the, right where it says newman road right to the right of that maybe it I mean, from here it looks like an inch there's an actual entry there off of Newman. The developer had Thank you. to approve that segment of Newman from the entry road all the way to 519 as, as a gesture uh, to the neighbor. Okay. And it, they're contributing to some of that impact, but they'll include that as well. So the currently the road is in not that great. So you've agreed to how much of how much road have you agreed to? I think it's roughly 900 feet. 900 feet. How, 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 how long is that road? Ooh. It's 900 feet from Main Street to Newman so, or to the entry, then it's probably another. So that road is probably double that road. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's an opportunity, Caesar, so, with the new improved uh, street maintenance department you have absolutely. To, to work, to collaborate. We're going to fix the basement area. Okay. Yeah. 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 
Good deal. That, uh, Mayor, Go ahead, the, the neighborhood and actually that it winds around Newman and hits over William is where you're at, and we know the sewer issues, but that you're right about the neighborhood. It's an older neighborhood and it's slow <clears throat> subsidence has occurred in that area too. Uh, just a suggestion. This is not going to be, um, th this is going to remain open, an open ditch, right? Open, open ditch. So I, I hope that in your planning, you're planning on widening the open ditch because right now it doesn't exist. Yeah, I, and I, that's I, what's contributing to the water backups on that side. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Blowing down. down, exactly. To I move that water that part way. Part of what will happen is clearing that ditch. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. And you're going to be also getting rid of the coyotes that are in that. <laughs> exactly. Any further uh, questions? Again, uh, it just proves that Lamarck is moving forward. Another 128 homes into our community to help with the restaurants and, and staffing of, of Crossroads. And so it's Sonny and Lamarck. Thank you for being here. Kiara, where are we in this process? Do we need a motion? I will entertain a motion to approve. I proudly move that we approve this. Is that a second? <laughs> so move. It's second. I'm Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 8-2. Thank, Thank you, sir. Sorry, just for the record, that will be ordinance 2024-0006 moving forward. Thank you, ma'am. 8-2, proposed resolution authorizing application submission for Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Texas, uh, Blue Impact Grants Program, application program. Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is an item, again, we're continuing to be aggressive with grants. Um, we wanted to recognize that our actual uh, grant um, uh, grant liaison that we uh, have assist us with this particular grant is in-house today. Uh, this is a, uh, since we are funded by uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield for our insurance, we found an opportunity where we could get a walking path, the closest one in proximity um, and in direct shot down uh, Highway 3 is MLK Park. So we're looking at uh, a grant funding, possibly if, if considered a 0.16 walking trail to be added to MLK Park as part of the Parks Master Plan. This item's already gone to the Parks Board for approval. Uh, this past Thursday, they strongly encouraged it, and it's here before you tonight for uh, final submission. Very good. Council, do we have any questions for Mr. Garcia or for our grant writer who's here with us tonight? And this is paid for by or the grant submission is to Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Correct. It is their Blue Impact uh, grant product. Is, is it just the, the walking trail, or does it include exercise stations of, of any sort? This one right now today is only for the walking trail. There, there, there is discussion to do more as part of it. Any further questions? And then we will entertain a motion. So moved. Do second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? A three proposed resolution. Did you want to? Did you need to add a number? Yes, it'll be resolution twenty twenty four dash zero zero two zero. Thank you, ma'am. Eight three proposed resolution suspending the April tenth twenty twenty four effective date of Centerpoint Energy Houston Electric. LLC's requested rate change. Caesar, did you want to brief us or is this? Actually, this Gus, one I'd like Gus to take Gus. the lead on this one, please. Sure, Mayor. Um, this is another one of the uh, rate cases. Centerpoint has filed a request um, to raise rates, what looks to be a dollar twenty-five per month, the average rate, dollar twenty-five per month per resident, which will raise an additional sixty million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, this is asking the city council to deny that request and authorize um, the intervention in um, before the PUC to um, uh, contest that, in both investigate the rate request and then to contest it. Um, and those uh, fees are paid for as part of, uh, by Centerpoint. So, and this is all done through the city's participation in the Gulf Coast Coalition of Cities, which the city has been a member of for years. And so a motion to approve is actually a motion to deny on this one? Okay. A motion to deny, yes, Mayor. Council, do we have any questions for Gus as relates to item A3? 
that $60 million increase impacts all that coalition of cities. Is that accurate? <laughs> Or, no, or, no, that's not Lamarck alone. No, 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 no. no. It, it It's everybody in the Houston, in what the center point Houston area is. Okay. Um, so. All right. I will end, whatever thank you. the appropriate motion is to deny. <laughs> uh, you approve, you, you. I'm <laughs> denying the rate. Are you, yes. are you Moving. making a motion to approve no. so that we can deny? Approve the resolution to deny. Okay, there you right go. There. That's is that second? Is that second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing that, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Eight, Question. four. Line, Barger, <clears throat> Gogan, Blair, and Sampson. Uh, consideration and approval for a professional collection services agreement with Line, Barger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson as a fully qualified. Uh, as being fully qual qualified as special counsel to perform all legal services necessary to collect unpaid utility accounts, fees, fines, and court costs as provided in Article 103.0031 of the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure and to collect delinquent, delinquent ad valorem taxes as provided in Section 6.30 of the Texas Property Tax Code. Uh, Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. I've invited our partners here from uh, Linebarger to please come forward. I'd like to recognize our team that's also uh, here uh, to discuss the next two items for your consideration. We're, we're here to ask for any questions you may have on these items as they come up. Eight, that would be 8485 and 86. There, there are two tonight. We are renewing the original uh, property tax, uh, delinquent property tax agreement, right? And right. then there is an additional service uh, as well. Certainly, um, Mayor. This, uh, the one that we're speaking about now, 8 4, is the continuation of the delinquent property tax uh, collection. Is that the one we're looking at? Actually, this looks like it's um, utility. utility accounts as well as uh, fines and This is costs. the new the new service. Correct. And one of the two new. Okay. Currently, you, they do help us with our um, court fines. One of the additions that we looked at is also their assistance on the unpaid utility accounts. Um, those two items are to be heard as part of 8-4. Okay, so again, to be clear, 8-4 are the new services. One of the two being proposed is new. They currently do help us pr provide uh, collection of the court fines. Okay, so yeah. one of the two services in 8-4 is new. Could you explain the new service? Absolutely. As was brought to through the uh, budget process, we learned that uh, Linebarger was an entity that did offer this service as part of their portfolio of a possible collections. And um, we've entertained the idea of, 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 of utilizing them to also do so. Uh, it is a no cost to us. Uh, they, they Those costs are passed along to whoever may need the service. But we are bringing these items to you because it is time for their renewal and it is perfect timing to bring this. Money. What is the new service? The new service is collection of utility fees, unpaid utility okay. fees. Man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, unpaid utility fees. So at this time, yeah. 8-4 considers the continuance of uh, legal services for uh, any court costs and the addition of collection of um, unpaid utility accounts. Water bills. Water bills, any type of utilities. Very good. Uh, Go ahead, I'm, I'm confused now. I've never seen, in now my four years, I've never seen any category of a financial report of any type with regard to delinquencies on the unpaid water bill. So I'm reluctant to vote on something that I don't even know there's a need for. And more importantly, I, I, uh, I do understand, in my mind, there's a, there's a distinction made between collecting on residential delinquencies, which I'm not interested in doing, versus commercial accounts. So, like I said, I'm, I'm confused as to this, this one just be brought out out of the blue. Having, not knowing what's, what's the extent of the of the, of, of the delinquency and all the four years of looking at financial reports. Who Never goes seen. after it now? Who goes after those unpaid? We do it as a staff. Oh. Um, we, we, we do so internally um, in, a, in addition to the other duties that we have. It, we're, we're, we're seeking assistance for yeah. any time that somebody goes a little bit longer. So I guess, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Yancey, were you doing? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. So I, I guess... 
the question is a are there delinquent uh water accounts yes okay have we been able did i hear a yes in the back was that miss christine did you want to approach miss christine okay <laughs> come on up come on up miss turner come on up i mean if you can help us to under yes okay. uh, do you have absolutely. a ballpark or an idea of what that looks like to mayor pro tem's point again we won't hold you to it this is a discussion mm -hmm. if if it's not as accurate as yes ma'am <clears throat> okay do you have a number of seats i'm sorry I roughly uh i'm you confirming probably. but i believe it's roughly slightly over forty thousand um, dollars current balance right now that we have what about yearly do you have a yearly total it does fluctuate by year. I do know that some folks have been able to, uh, to receive some additional assistance and we are doing everything in our power. Um, this is a service that again, if if you don't need it, we don't need to have it. Um, we're hopeful that we never have to use it with all respect to 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 a line barger. Um, but the extent of it is, is, is to assist us with those collections. Uh, we have some folks that we put on payment plans and um, they still can't meet those payment plans. And it becomes a little, you know, extenuating. We have several accounts that we're working now that have exceeded balances um, that, that just go on for a very long time. And it puts us in a predicament to obviously provide that service. And so my point, I guess, it, to maybe meet in the middle somewhere, um, is, is there a way that we would be able to, as a city, provide for parameters? Uh, in other words, we will, not, uh, we will not go after anyone that is 65 and older uh, uh, we will not go after a dollar amount that is under two hundred dollars. So, in other words, if, if we can, to, to Mayor Pro Tem's point, if we can help save folks that may have have one delinquent bill who fell on you know hard times, or maybe folks that are on fixed incomes, and then allow for us to maybe pursue uh, uh, pursue maybe more people people that are uh, perhaps uh, clearly delinquent or people that have the capacity right to to pay um again that's just food for thought council uh I don't know how you all feel about it but but well, to your point trying to yeah I, I understand mayor and I guess the other thing I'm and to add to your list of disabled uh you know disabled, the, yeah. the, disabled. That are Absolutely. fixed income on that side but uh I'm just I'm struggling on this one. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're 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 bringing an agreement here that, and to some of the points that the mayor brought up, after what time period, mm -hmm. right? Do we turn this over to collections? Kind of like a a tax uh, delinquency. What, what what does that happen? It goes over to you guys when? How many months after? At the end of the uh, fiscal year, or, or several months afterwards of the tax year? So that time frame, council member, is set by statute under the Texas Property Tax Code. Okay. Each July, the previous year's unpaid taxes are referred to us for collections. Okay, so it's, um, it's... My partner, Richard Hill, handles the collection side on the municipal court fees and fines. That, too, is governed by statute. Um, with respect to utilities, there is considerably more discretion that entities have. So, and I'll let Richard discuss the intricacies of, of that, as if that's his, his uh, forte. The timing on the turnover as far as uh, the court delinquencies is concerned is that they have to be at least a minimum of 60 days delinquent. Now, they can, of course, go longer than that, and that's certainly up to, to the court uh, and the city to set those parameters, but the statute said it has to be at least 60 days delinquent. Same thing with regards to utilities. The turnover is strictly a matter of when the city decides it is delinquent. That's your discretion. And since I ex walk me through this, because we have had this discussion since you came aboard, right? We're trying to to under trying to identify resources for individuals that would possibly struggle with with our new rates as well. That was number one uh, mm -hmm. to help out in that transition. And as I recall, we were successful in that effort. Yeah, we right. have uh, Baker Ripley. We have we have Baker Ripley, and that's part of. But then we also have Chosen some few. other uh, other groups that assist with that, mm -hmm. as well as ourselves. Right? We have 
allocated some of our uh, discretionary dollars under a Seth grant, under a Seth grant mm -hmm. for this. So walk me through this. Someone that is delinquent on a water bill, in, in my mind, with all these resources, actually, there should be no delinquency. If I'm, if I'm, Mayor Pro Tem, that is, the that is, you're absolutely. 100% correct. We hope to never have to utilize this. For example, at one point, our delinquencies were well, well, well beyond the uh, $200,000 uh, range where we were at any given time above that. I believe shortly after uh, Councilman Ross uh, came in office, because I know he asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm proud to report today, according to Venetia's messages, now that we're hovering at around 33500 Okay. So a drastic improvement has been made. And this is, although we've had the higher rates, although we've had the tough economic times, so we're happy to report that. You're right. We have allocated some funds. There are the Baker Ripley's, the Chosen Ones, the American Red Cross, the United Way, all the other partners that we have, you know, Salvation Army, that do help a lot of our residents. Our hope is to never have to utilize this service. And if council deems to not do so after, as was mentioned, after a certain amount of time, then that's what we choose to do, then absolutely no problem. But it's having the mechanism in place to be able to do so. Um, sometimes we are often having to deal with those situations. We do refer folks, but we also have some folks that are just habitually not paying their bill and 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 have exhausted all of their services. And of this amount, how how many how many of them are businesses or commercial accounts? We're 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 very happy to report that we're doing a lot better on that side than we are on the residential side. So what's what's the breakdown? I, I don't have that breakdown right now. Venetia's trying to join, so she might be able to give us some 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 more exact stuff. She had to leave. But yes, sir, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, at this time right now, since a question was asked of the amount, I was able to obtain that roughly 33500 And I believe Councilman Ross also verified the amount because I believe he also asked again recently what, what some of the deficiencies are. Again, we're bringing this item to you as having a mechanism. I yeah. believe it was brought up once during the budget retreat. Once again, during the budget workshop, uh, we said we were we would bring you the actual item when it came back to the time for renewal, since we knew we'd had to renew at this time. And that's what we're doing here tonight. If you choose not to move on this item, then so be it. I'm sure that we'll be more than happy to continue working with Lion Barger for their uh, court fines, uh, excuse me, court collections, as well as other uh, uh, the uh, tax collections as well, excuse me. And, and, and uh, gentlemen, we can come back and just separately b bring this fourth later correct you're not you're not Tim, objecting yes. to that are you certainly not okay. at all if it yeah. if the council if it's the council's desire to pass on taking action to approve the utility collection contract we're certainly fine with that mm -hmm. uh, at this point i can say i have a lot of more questions and mm -hmm. and uh, and once again my biggest concern is i have never seen it listed on any of the financial reports as a delinquency and in, in an accounting world you need to show delinquencies as well too. So that's all. That's my view on it. I would I would support the, you know, renewing the agreement on the, on the municipal, uh, yeah. fees or delinquencies. Yeah. Any further discussion? I'll say that I'll support Mayor Pro Tem on not going forward with the utility stuff even though i have reached out to several citizens that have been several months delinquent um tried to get them all the help and stuff that they can get as long as we can find find a way to ensure that they're going to follow their side of it because there's there comes a point in time where you can no longer take the horse to water because they're not going to drink you have to do something else to make sure we as a city are recouping what we're doing or have a fund set up to absorb some of those those costs yeah. as it comes through yeah um and i've got a heart heartburn about about it at, at this time i know we do need to have efficiency but can i be honest your firm does does so much in our county. When they see your firm, it causes alarm sometimes when you get that kind from because it has to do with taxes and it has to do with that. And people get really nervous. And because it does have to do with municipal courts and things of that nature, um, in certain communities, people get even more alarmed. So that's why I'm I'm a little concerned about even furthering that out even more to utility. Um 
as well. Uh, so I think there's something we need to revisit. I agree with uh, Council Councilman Ross and Councilman uh, Coffin as well. Just because of I know some of the, some of the issues that we, <laughs> you know, y'all are good, <laughs> and sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it could uh, cause great alarm to people, especially if they think their freedom or their home is about to be taken. And we're just talking about utilities right now. So I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. And, and thank you for allowing me to, to, shit, to be honest about that. We don't want people having a heart attack <laughs> thinking this property tax and it's $30 utility, you know? <laughs> so thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I think the idea of having a mechanism, right? You, you said it, having a mechanism, having having a tool to um, at our disposal to to recoup those delinquent those those uh, delinquent accounts that belong to the citizens of Lamarck. Those are funds that are in city coffers that are used, right, to help to secure our water infrastructure. Um, and if you use those services, you ought to pay. You ought to pay. This is a mechanism that will allow for our city to uh, bring folks to a place uh, that they uh, continue on in their commitment and their obligation, right, to our city. Um, but but as, as always, as I've always said, as mayor, mayor pro tem and council member, when our members have heartburn and they aren't clear and they don't have the clarity to vote, we slow down. Uh, and so Mayor Pro Tem has indicated uh, he wants clarity. So as Ms. Yancey and uh, Mr. Ross. Um, and, and so certainly we need to provide them what they've asked for. I believe we can take this item uh, and act on it uh, with the ex exclusion of this one issue, uh, provided that I'm willing to go along with that, provided that next meeting, next meeting, Kira, this returns to our agenda with the uh, pertinent information so the council can make an educated decision. Is that fair? Is that fair? Just, just so I understand. So you want to move on the court side and bring utility back separate next meeting? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that, so that we can get there you go. hundred percent. James, did you want to say something? I also, as we move into the utility side, I want to know what is the hard stop for the city? Right. When have we given somebody enough mm -hmm. leeway to say, okay, now we have to turn you over because right. we don't want to turn your water off, but we need our money back. Right. That, you know, what is that line going to be also, you know, because right. I don't want to turn off water to an elderly person's home or a, a young woman who is taking care of an elderly parent, even because at some point in time, that will be my daughter taking care of the sure. elderly parent who lives on a fixed income. I don't <laughs> want that. I don't want that to be a burden for her. Yeah. So let's we need to that's what we need to figure out before next meeting also what is our level our threshold of pain for that very good care did you get all, all that we will then uh if if uh if there's nothing further we will entertain a motion to approve item 84 with the exclusion of the uh delinquent utility service so moved. is there a second Second. Any further discussion? Again, let the record reflect that the uh, delinquent utility service will be brought back at the very next council meeting with the information requested by three council members. If there's nothing further. We'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Item 8-5, Lionbarger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson. Consideration and approval for a professional collection services agreement with Lionbarger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson after having provided adequate notice as required by section 2254.1036 of the Texas government code and authorizing the city manager, I guess that should be, not the city mayor, uh, the city manager to execute said agreement. Mr. Garcia, would you help us to understand item 8.5 
Certainly, Mayor. Uh, on this item, this is the second of, of, of the three items that we're discussing with the uh, line barger tonight. And this item is more dedicated to the more traditional thing that, that we're used to seeing line barger assistance with, which is the collection of uh, taxes. So we want to change motions uh, pertaining to that, and um, we can just go from there. Any questions for uh, line barger as it relates to 85? This is the standard agreement that we have held with them for of the last uh, several years. Right. If, if if there are no questions, uh, I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Eight, six. Uh, just a comment. Yes, sir. I missed your presentation, Mark, of um, all your collection reports and stuff. We didn't get this this year. I'm happy. To, I'm certainly happy to uh, appear at your budget workshop this year. I I can't tell you that as we bring them back every year during budget workshop. Yeah, absolutely. As of four ten p.m. today, um, your current your collection rate for property taxes, uh, going back from two thousand five to two thousand twenty two cumulative, is ninety nine point four five percent. Wow. That does not include penalty and interest that was paid. In addition, that's just a collection of base levy tax. So you mm -hmm. should be very proud of those numbers. Very good. Very good. Very good. And that's our working class city. So remember that. Yeah. Hardworking people. <laughs> Eight six proposed resolution consideration discussion and possible action regarding adopting a resolution of the city council of the city of Lamarck regarding Linebarger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson as being fully qualified as special counsel to perform all legal services pursuant to section 2254.1036 of the Texas Government Code for collection of unpaid fines, fees, and court costs. Uh, this is just a resolution, Council, so I will entertain a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Mayor, just clarify this. I didn't quite understand. Why is this? If I'm, if I may. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem, thank you. Uh, so several sessions ago, the legislature took action so that governmental entities that entered into a contingent fee contract for legal services had to have this expression in a formal resolution. This was essentially this was a in response to local government entities that contracted with attorneys to pursue. Uh, like opioid settlements, tobacco settlements, uh -huh. these contingent fee contracts. However, when the legislature defined the contracts that would fall within this scope, uh, we were kind of collateral damage. We fall within that scope, although it was not really their intention. However, that is the statute. So thus the resolution before you. Okay. And the full statute requires those kinds of contracts where there are huge revenues or the potential for huge revenues for that contract to be further sent to the attorney general mm -hmm. for review and approval. However, these contracts only require that the public be put on notice that you have considered it and that you are approving. So there's a distinction being made between what was that that agreement that, that Joe Jaworski, uh, Joseph came up here with? Yes. That um, yes, that Yes, there's a distinction. Okay. Um, and the distinction there was well, council chose not to do it, but council was selling something. And that that was the distinction. But we did we did do it. No. We did. No. Oh. No. I thought we did. All right. <laughs> Mad cow disease. Hey, Kiara, do we need a motion or We did all of it. It does require a motion. I think we need to move. Okay. But yes. Yeah. Okay. Move that uh, we yeah. approve this resolution. I have a motion huh? from Council on the and a second from Council on the Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Very good. <laughs> Very good. I just need to vote. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We've already uh, acted upon 8 7. Let's move to 8 8. Thank you. Bro. Memorandum of Understanding. 
discussion possible action regarding enacting a memorandum of understanding between the city of Lamarck and Cultural Corporation. Thank you, guys. Mr. Thank Garcia. You. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Um, Mayor, this item um, is one that was uh, brought to us by both community uh, desires and expressing the, the need for summer camp programming throughout our city, as well as identifying a group that we already have an MOU with through our Lamarck charters. Uh, this item is a um, a MOU that articulates the fact that we would work together to offer those summer camp services for city residents. We'll entertain any questions. Very good. Let the record reflect that this is the first summer that we will have a parks and recreation program for our young people. And I believe that our librarian is leading the charge, uh, Mrs. Amy Miller. Uh, Amy, did you want to um, approach? Did you have anything that you want to add? This is a this is a wonderful, wonderful idea that we've worked really hard to try to bring about. Uh, the city of Texas City has a full time parks and recreation program for their young folks. This year, we're starting with a part time, first ever in our history, uh, parks and recreation program for our young people. Right. Um, like you said, we are like we always do at the library. We always have a summer reading program that encourages people and encourages students to keep up their reading throughout the summer so that they don't fall behind when they go back to school. This year, we're incorporating um, some recreational activities to go along with that. And um, that's, this is the group that we're wanting to partner with to accomplish that. Very good. Any, uh, Mayor, go ahead, Jeff. I, I didn't see much. Is this a 501c3 nonprofit? I Googled it, it and I didn't see much that, that came up on this. It is. Group. We did verify that it is an active 501c3. Oh. Uh, we have an MOU already in place with this group through the Lamarck Charters, who utilize our, our park space to offer youth football programming. Oh, okay. They carry on for an additional service. So it's a local group. It is, yes. yes. Right. All right. Okay. And this is a group that, that also utilizes our parks already. Mm -hmm. Correct. So they're already there. Okay. Well, I, I I do, you know, I'm all about the kids, right? And making sure that um, we we provide safety for them as well. I do, I encourage you, you all to get in um, contact with the area principals this before the summer comes, because it's the first summer, right? To to try to, you know, they would, they've been dying for something like this for the, for the city to do. So I'm really glad that We've moved on that. I know when you were being interviewed and brought on, it's something we said. So it's nice to see that it's finally manifesting. I know, Amy, you always do a great job with the children. So looking forward to see what this will morph, morph into. Absolutely. We are working out the uh, the details on that. It should be ready with the flyer and things to present to parents and to our area schools uh, pretty pretty soon. We wanted to take it in in, in order First, bring you the fact of how, how we're going to bring it. And then once we have that, then then we can showcase to the schools that we're serious about it, get their approval for even some possible shared space at no charge. And then we can take the next step, which is formally announcing the program. I know when I talk to, to, to Jared about this, this is going to provide lunch, breakfast and lunch for the students that are, participate in it. Um, it was going to he said something like close to 700 bucks a week is what it was going to cost them at a charge of $25 a day. If approved as a program, and if we approve the MOU, we'll bring you an entire package that displays okay. exactly schedule, times, cost, everything that's associated with it, and then our plan of action, how we hope to reduce or eliminate all the costs for the children participating. Number of kids, the times, field trips, the whole nine yards are included. The, we didn't way, want to get preemptive and then bring that to you without first agreeing that we're ready to move this product. So the way that the library will be involved is we will have staff on site <clears throat> where the, the program will be taking place to provide STEM-based activities uh, at least three times a week. Mm -hmm. Good. This is really needed, especially now that ESSA funds are gone for schools where they would do their, their extra um, activities like this. So this is amazing that this is going to happen because there's no gap. There's a gap basically now since those ESSA funds from the federal government are not gone. So kudos to you all that we're stepping in to fill that void. We're working on it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Any uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, we will entertain a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Let's call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Eight, nine. Emergency sanitary sewer pipeline replacement. Discussion possible action regarding ratifying the expenditure of $84,677.50. Uh, for emergency pipeline replacement completed by Ramrod Utilities on February 17th, 2024. Rick. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor City Council. This item before you has to do with a uh, about 465 feet of sanitary sewer pipe over on Shady Lane that had a pretty catastrophic failure. We had people backed up. Uh, sewer was not able to move. We brought a contractor in on a Saturday to replace that line using pipe bursting technology. Um, line was replaced. Very good. Any questions for Rick as it relates to item <laughs> eight and nine? Be more excited, Rick. <laughs> the pipe, the, the pipe, pipe broke and you just, you just repaired the pipe. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. No more backups. And, oh, and and just for the record, um, that is noted on the agenda form, uh, these residents had endured 27 sewer backups since 2018. Yeah. Um, That's great. We did as much as we could to band-aid it. This was something that had to happen. This is part of the needed infrastructure repairs. We're hoping that we don't have to have too many of them at one time, but this is the type of work that needs to happen underground. How do and this is just a discussion, maybe over a cup of coffee at Art of Coffee or something. <laughs> but how do other cities, and you know the city manager of Kansas City is a friend and occasionally talk about this, and but how do other cities, in your experience, deal with these sort of um, deficiencies and and defects or or soil shifts that result in in lines or water lines, how do they? I mean, I've heard different things. I've heard some that- May, may, I, may, may, may I take the first swing of this? Sure. They usually adopt a very um, well-planned capital improvement plan mm -hmm. that addresses the areas of need off of whatever studies have been done in certain areas. They'll usually do certain um, inspections in certain areas where they have an abundant amount of calls as was done here. We knew this was an area that was fragile. We just never had the funds available. Mm -hmm. And as some of the things that have been discussed about possible funding in the future, at that time, then you bring those items forward for, mm -hmm. for consideration. Thank you. Well, let's uh, entertain a motion to approve. Sure. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 18. Approve work order from Attico Engineers LLC for GIS mapping for public works infrastructure. Discussion possible approve a possible possible excuse me approval of work order submitted by Attico Engineers. Thank you, Mayor. For phase two. Hold on, just and I have a, for phase two. I have a correction to make on the on the agenda item. The fiscal um, number that that's on there is incorrect. The um, the work order amount is actually seventy four thousand five fifty five. Okay, so I'm going to finish reading okay. for phase two <laughs> implementation <laughs> of geographical information system GIS for water and sanitary sewer infrastructure. Rick, you were saying to us you did what now? I apologize. I, okay. I um the fiscal impact that's on the agenda item is incorrect at thirty three thousand five twenty. The work order to do the work is actually seventy four thousand. 555. Dan, did you want to approach and help us to understand uh, why we need this? Joe. This. Oh, good, sir. So the, uh, the city uh, last fiscal year uh, approved, approved Attica to start preparing uh, GIS uh, implementation of new GIS um, uh, mapping for for the city we've started that uh we're nearing completion we we're just waiting for um some a qa qc by staff and then we'll we'll start publishing that i think we've sent it to most of the staff members the second phase involved uh design not designing but uh incorporating utility lines that are currently on paper 
uh, the city has a map book that uh, was prepared by Mr. Keith Morgan, or Mike, Mike, Mike Morgan, about 15 years ago. Yeah. And the city's been working off of those paper, paper books. So as part of the integration of GIS, we've offered to incorporate, build those lines in a platform where the uh, city staff would be able to locate those lines digitally. Uh, and available to to staff anytime okay. uh, instead of um, flipping through books. So. My fellow counselors, any questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Have a motion. Need a second. Second. Have a motion made and seconded. Um, no further discussion. Those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Hearing none, <clears throat> move on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, what's our next item, uh, Kira? Um, that would be 811. 11. Sorry, getting bad at wrong. Mm -hmm. 811 is the city roadway. Yes, the 2024 City of the Mark Roadway Pavement Assessment Study authorizing Attico. LLC to perform professional engineering services for the 2024 City of Lamarck Roadway Pavement Assessment Study. Okay, and the mayor. Thank you, you Joe. Uh, mayor, may I? Yes. Um, this item is as a result of something similar to what we did with our light study. Um, DIN was uh, secured to help us with our light study, which has helped us advance uh, that program fairly quickly. In order for us to find out exactly a way of grading our streets and finding out which streets are indeed in worse conditions, getting accurate quotes for everything that we have, uh, and not just going by, hey, a resident called here, or we want that or anything else, but an equitable graded system to do, one thing that is recommended by other cities and is the best practice is to do an actual complete city pavement study to look at the condition of what your roads are in. I'll ask Denny Carey from here. Thank you, CJ. Um, as part of this study, we would analyze and document the condition of each road. Um, there is a, uh, ASHTO uh, does publish a grading worksheet that details um, the level of critical, criticality, critic, <laughs> criticality, <laughs> sorry, uh, uh, of, of the roadways. And similar to what we did when the bond project uh, was let out uh, several years ago, the county bond project, we identified roadways that are in the worst condition and then basically put together an assessment and detail cost estimate to go along with it. We'll identify the, the, the level uh, condition of these roadways based on the, not just the condition of pavement, but the actual uh, use of the roadway, how, how often it's used, where it's located, and then we'll provide a cost estimate to go along, along with that for improvement. Uh, so this will give the city an opportunity to identify uh, which roadways takes priority. Um, one thing I'll point out real quick, the last street analysis was done in 2005. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Great minds take a light. We found the need, Mayor, um, that it's time. Yeah. Uh, we know the assessment done then is, for the most part, probably not very conducive right now, knowing the conditions have changed so much. Mm -hmm. uh, storms, rainwater, and, and different things that, that, that have occurred since then uh, do not allow us a chance to use that data anymore. Uh, we do know we have a lot of new streets as well and a lot of work that's been done since then. So we we, we really need to evaluate the full condition of our streets and we ask for your support in doing so at this time. The backup documentation is to show just a sample of what those streets were, since those were two of the streets, of the many streets that have been asked, but the two that we could quickly provide. And also part of the assessment is we will recommend which streets would, would uh, be best suited for curb and gutter versus which streets would be suited to be open ditch, depending on in, in, in coordination with our drainage plan as well. So. Um, the idea is to be, do a complete study, quickly bring that back to you so we can take the next course of action in line with some of those ARPA funds that we've discussed so we can be as uh, as efficient as possible. Any questions for uh, Caesar as it relates to item 811? 
No, but I, I do want to make a comment, though. Th this is why um, I really push for the grant administrator, because HGAC does have funds. J Joe and I have gone to those meetings where you can ap apply for these type of funds. If you notice on the back of, thanks for using Brown and Jefferson that you showed me before, the difference between curb and gutter is almost double, right, Between versus open ditch. But we know curb and gutter is much more professional looking uh, than open ditch. And when I was growing up, Lamarck was the place where you came to see. I mean, I, I used I lived in Dickinson, so I used to get teased about our roads compared to you guys' roads. Y'all, y'all, your reputation in Lamarck was that you all I all had the best roads and you didn't have potholes and all of that back in the day. So we want to return to that splendor, right? Um, but I do think, and I know council, you all voted it down. But, I, but this is where we need help, because even on Jefferson, which we know is probably one of the worst streets we have, it's a million dollars to fix just one street. However, if we continue to get grants like, um, like we talked about from HGAC, and, and that's why I think it's important that we do that, because of this, Brown, people on Brown and Jefferson have been complaining for years about their streets, and I'm determined to help them to try to find a way to do that. But it's very, very, very expensive. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, yeah, Mayor, let me, um, <clears throat> Council Member Yancey makes an important point, and I've mentioned it to you already, Mr. City Manager, and you know this. It, but it's you guys, and, and I applaud staff, all, all of you guys are being asked to do a superhuman um, work in terms of the hours that you're putting putting in on uh, on keeping up not only with us but with the needs of the residents of Lamarck uh, and uh, but uh, council member Yancey is completely right uh, and I serve on on two of the, those committees the transportation committees but we need to all find time to get together ladies and gentlemen where we have different categories and help me identify the categories. The street on Jefferson falls into one category that's mm -hmm. called regional transportation of goods mm -hmm. because that's a commercial that's street, a commercial right? Street. With A&A &A machine shop. That would fall under that category. But one street alone is not gonna be enough. So we need to identify several others and that's where your your input comes in, so that I can put together a package and present to the committee and start the work, start the advocacy that's necessary on that side. Then there are other two categories. The other is um, future growth. I, I mentioned to you, Cesar and, and Mayor, that's the West End, right? The, the uh, dog track development and stuff. Once again, sitting with you guys, what are the priorities? Let's map out a vision for that that we need, right? And we can, and we're already starting to work on projects for 2026, which we have one billion dollars, one billion dollars mm -hmm. that are going to be available. But where does that money primarily go now? Harris County, right? Our big, big sister up north, right? And and she's getting bigger, and so. Uh, and I'm and I'm on a diet, and I want her to go on a diet too. So so uh, uh, so I need your help on that. I really do on on those areas. I do have a question on this. Please, I don't understand this. Why are, why is the um, this one where it says professional engineering services for pavement assessment study work order, and this is for Omega Bay. We don't own the streets in Omega Bay. May I comment on that? Yeah. So a uh, possibility of doing that and assigning that fee, we have not yet discussed that. That's why it's a possible additional service. But the idea is to possibly have, we know that Omega Bay would like to also get their streets redone. There is consideration on a separate item that we're not going to entertain tonight, but some of the things that we're working on where they may need assessment of their streets as well. And in doing so, the residents have asked us to, to, to possibly utilize our resources. This would not be included as a bill to the city at this time. But it is something for us to at least have a quote on, uh, if as a possible additional service that we could entertain in the future, without having to come back to you every single time that we have this. So if, this is not an actual work 
Not at this time. It would be for additional consideration. No, man, no, sir. We just wanted to show the numbers where they were and make sure that we included all of our residents, including the ones from Omega Bay that would like to piggyback on the service. Similar to the fact when they helped us, ask us for possible assistance with their lights or with some of their culverts or some of their infrastructure that we did, you know, lend a hand or offer any pricing that we had. Yeah. I, I, I would like to take a moment as to the validity as to why we need this type of study done. Similar to how we did our light study, it does allow us to have a packet where we can now sit with potential uh, funders to sit and say, hey, we are looking for funding for the following and here's what we need. Here's an exact breakdown of which streets we need done, when we need them, why we need them, and so forth. So to that uh, uh, end, we, 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 we really hope that you support this type of thing. So by approving this, we're saying to Den, okay, um, the other side of Duro over there, we need uh, uh, to identify the cost. Keep it open ditch. It's open ditch over there. But what it would cost uh, in the most cost-effective way. Hey. Yeah either repave or, or do what works is there. Part of this is to identify which roads need it the most and all, all city roads. I believe we identified 60, about 60 miles of road, give or take through the city. If you had all city roads, not inclusive of, of textile roads, let's make sure we keep that separate, but city roads, roughly 60 miles. This is an assessment of those 60 miles. All 60. All 60. Uh, let me tag on to this. The, the, the school district has aggressively begun laying out the work over there on Duro and Voshe for the new campus mm -hmm. and the new stadium. Okay. It's exciting news. I'm noticing that there is much, uh, the, the the roadway traffic of heavy trucks has significantly increased. Mm -hmm. Now, on Duro, and I'm around when this was built, that's concrete from Texas Avenue to the high school. That was the intent mm -hmm. because the buses were all supposed to come right. in wow. through that side. They were not supposed to come in off of the freeway and start damaging the asphalt road, which was not. Now, Texas bus, is it Texas limousine? Sir, what's it called? Texas bus lines. The one that's there next to the mental uh, health building. Galveston, Galveston Limousine. Galveston Limousine. Now their buses, the big ones, are using Duro as a shortcut to come over to, to that area. So I, I, I guess, Mr. City Manager, I'd like to know, do we have any uh, road, what's it, uh, weight limits with regard to uses of our roads? Or, uh, and or, number two, are there any discussion with the school district as they're developing the properties with mm -hmm. regard to significantly uh, Improving that investing way. with us on rebuilding the roadways on both sides over there? That's my other question in this regard there as part Certainly. of this. And separate from this item, we'll definitely look for that when we get back. Thank you. Um, let's let's give uh, some some institutional knowledge to what we're talking about. While we, uh, and I was a part of that council in, in 2005, <laughs> while we, uh, while we uh, authorized a pavement study in 2005, I believe it was 2012-ish, uh, 13-ish, I believe council was able to actually repair about 55 streets. Uh, so we don't want to leave the public with the idea that we hadn't repaired streets in 20 years because that would not be true. Uh, about 10 years ago, it's about 55 of our streets repaired. This last year, we were able to repair about 14 of those streets. So the council has been working. Uh, what we are suggesting is that we have not had an opportunity to have a study, a complete pavement study since 2005. Just want to bring clarity, uh, institutional knowledge since I believe only uh, Kyle, myself, and Gandhi was here back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe, no, not even Kathleen. Anyway, all right. Anything further on this item? I know we need a motion. Is that right, Kiara? We need a motion for approval. I'll entertain that motion. So moved. Is that a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Item nine, the city manager's report. Council, as always, to expedite this portion of our meeting, uh, we will uh, pull items out that we would like to 
have a discussion about. Uh, and so let's uh, let's move through this uh, city manager's report. Uh, does anybody uh, would anybody like to discuss item nine one? Would anyone like to discuss item nine two? Would anyone like to discuss item nine three? Would anyone like to discuss item nine four? We have one for nine four. Would anyone like to discuss item nine five? Would anyone like to discuss item nine six? Sales tax? Yes. yes. Is that you, Joe? Yes, sir. Would anyone like to discuss item nine seven? Would anyone like to discuss item nine eight? Would anyone like to discuss item nine nine? Would anyone like to discuss item nine ten? Would anyone like to discuss item nine eleven? I think that I will discuss that one. Uh, would anyone like to discuss item nine twelve? That would be me as well. And so we have four items of note to discuss. I believe, Mr. Ross, you are seeking to have a conversation about nine four. Yes. Yes, sir. You have the floor. Um. I just would like to know when it's going to be easier for us to be able to look at anything that's being spent in the city because I still have a hard time going through our website trying to pick out or going through the app trying to pick out what we're actually spending money on and and where it's going and how it's being spent. Good evening. Um, Good evening. We are still in progress. Um, today, we actually, um, several of the department heads were on the line with a new software company. Um, so we're looking in, into that. We're exploring that. Um, I do have a template set up and ready to go, but it'll be a manual one. So um, I hope to have that ready for next council. Thank you. And also, if there's some way that I don't know uh, as we transition our public relations department and stuff, if each council person can basically have a copy of their quote unquote checkbook on there so that somebody can go directly to my page and go, where is he spending his money without having to go through the rest of the budget and stuff? Just Yes, sir. Kira, do you receive that report from Brittany? I received it earlier today. Okay. Yes. So she'll disperse it out to council each person, you know, the report, the council report. Okay. You good, Mr. Ross? No, I'm good. Mr. Campion, item nine, seven, six. So, sales tax. How many months behind are we on the sales tax reporting? Two. Two. So when I look at March, that really is a reflection of sales that occurred in January? Yes, sir. In January. And uh, and so I guess maybe this is part of the economy then we actually over the Christmas and holiday season saw a decrease in our sales tax collections. When I see this decrease in in um, in December of sales tax collections. That would be reflected as February. Yes. Could you put this up, Carol? I'm sorry. Yeah, please. It's for the public review and the council teaser review. And and Mayor Pretend that's correct. It shows a roughly five percent decrease from the previous year. From the previous year. Yep. So this year looks like December, which shows in February shows six eighty four, while the in fe uh, last year February twenty two twenty three it showed seven fifteen. Although the trend is still higher from the last two years, we always show this data to show uh, the three previous years, uh, so that you get to see it. And your current year shown is the fourth year. Yeah. So so Caesar, while while Joe's uh 
uh, thinking about that, what we need to do is we need uh, a report generated to council uh, as to uh, the uh, other uh, impacting factors, whether it be inflation, uh, things of that nature. Also, that needs to be communicated to our Economic Development Corporation. Uh, and we need to uh, certainly be on the same page with, with a campaign push to uh, spin local. To buy local, that's really... and we need to. We need to be. If, if we're seeing that those trends, uh, and and those trends uh, are not uh, national trends, if they're local trends, we certainly need to understand that. And if they are, if they are national trends, we need to understand that as well. But we need to put together a response uh, from from this. Uh, from our economic development corporation to boost those numbers. I guess the other thing too, uh, uh, Mayor, when that was my where I was going with this. These figures, do they include the the sales tax revenue that's going to the EDC? Yes. Th this is yes. this is a gross amount. Yes, sir. It's, it's so this is the gross amount. Yes, EDC mm -hmm. is twenty five percent. City is seventy five percent. Uh, so this is total yes. on that side. And this includes Amazon. Yes. All that includes. Yes. I would yeah. Think so, so. Mm. Was, that, was there a resolution, Gus, on the litigation from um, on, on the site of sale, source of sale? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I don't think so. I haven't seen anything either. So as it stands, the sources to sale would still come to us. The city, I understand, is receiving some amount of tax from Amazon. I don't know the, I don't know the ins and outs of what of I don't know the calculation of that. Yeah. Does that you answer your that, question? That, I should I guess, find that calculation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you remember the old? I remember you and I discussed. Remember I showed you the sheet of at one time in our in our comprehensive audited reports, we used to show the biggest sales mm -hmm. tax. Uh, mm -hmm. payers in the city mm -hmm. and i would like to see that we have that information by by entity and um uh, that just gives us an idea of where who's who's contributing and um and also it's holding us responsible for us when we make statements that this is going to represent this or that i i want to be honest about about what the statements i'm saying on that side yeah. Yeah. just following through on this if I can, uh, also, uh, Mayor Council, um, one of the items that you guys asked us to look into uh, was a sales tax audit. Uh, we're very near. We're hoping that we can bring that to you in this next month for an item for your for your uh, um, consideration. We've already shared that information with EDC. They have been supportive, and we're finalizing that so we can bring it forward. So when you say bring to us a sales tax audit, not the actual not audit, the audit, but a, a, a proposal, proposal to have one done? Oh, correct. And Thank and then the only other comment, Mr. City Manager and Council Members, is I want to again urge us to seriously come back and consider the uh, consider a um, one of these um, bed and breakfast ordinances. What what are they called? Uh, uh, Short term rental mm -hmm. ordinances. Mm -hmm. We don't have one. And I keep looking at, at online yeah. and the number of listings that show for Lamar keep increasing. Our, are, RV parks as well. Oh, part of that. Yeah. On, on that yeah. side. Yeah. So. We are working on that ordinance. We're almost finished. Uh, we need to do is get your comparables to other cities as to what they charge. But that uh, that ordinance is in final draft minus the amount. We want to bring you comps so you can make an educated decision on how you want to move forward. Okay. Thank you. That's all we Um. So I just item nine uh, nine eleven. I just wanted to be clear. This this commercial vehicle enforcement officer. Um, again, we have uh, uh, Highway three 146, 1764, 1765, five nineteen. Those are five major thoroughfares moving through our community, uh, and it has historically been an issue 
uh, for us to have commercial vehicles move through our community because they potentially cause disastrous situations. Uh, the only thing I had uh, was that in the in the uh, packet, it seems like we are suggesting that uh, uh, we may not have meet the criteria for the, for a uh, commercial vehicle enforcement officer, uh, which I don't know how that could or could not <laughs> be possible when we have commercial vehicles traveling through our community. Nonetheless, let me say this, nonetheless, uh, we will have the ability to enforce violations on our commercial vehicles, uh, no matter what we call that, that, uh, that unit, uh, because I know for a fact that we can, um, we can uh, establish traffic enforcement units. I didn't like what I read, Chief. I didn't understand yes. it. That's why you're here. Yeah, so why don't you help us to understand? It, it? it was it was pretty complicated. I had I talked to Gus and he gave me some advice. The uh, it started out. I called Lieutenant Atkins and he put me on the the law. It has about sixteen requirements that you have to meet, and there's one that we are not sure about. We we need to check with the com, uh, state comptroller. Gus re recommended that you've got to uh, the county's got to make a certain amount of money from gas and oil revenues to even be qualified to go to the training the training's put on by the federal the government. county right sir the county you said right it says county uh, galveston county i think it's 20 if i remember right 20 million dollars i think we do that but we weren't sure whether it's raw gas from the ground or if it's refined but it's countywide right countywide and uh we're checking that out and the other thing is before you even could get the training from the federal government, you've got to meet all that criteria. And we're setting up a meeting with the Texas City uh, officer that does this full time, Matt Masick. And I'm telling you, it's it's Chief, not a job you could do like a couple hours a week. It's, how, it's this full time job. Chief, how how did Texas City get a commercial because vehicle enforcement unit? And we are right. in the same county. That's what I'm saying. We just want to be sure that I meet. Okay. I I'm just checking. So we're doing that. Uh, I guess it's Gus's recommendations. If we do that, now Matt Masick is full time. It's not a job you can just do, you know, put somebody on, you know, a couple hours a week. So that's that's sure. one of the issues. Uh, if we want to do it right, we should do that. And that's all he, that's his main function. Uh, but we're, but in the interim, and it's the memo reads kind of clear, is we're, doing what I did 10 years ago or so, we're contacting the, the refineries and we're giving them, you know, notice that please tell your, your your trucks that come in there that not to use our, you know, use the right highways. We do, we're going to work overtime for right now because officers can make cases uh, not being a commercial, uh, you know, enforcement officer by, by the uh, hazmat signs that if you have a hazmat sign, you shouldn't be on 519, you're supposed to use the, the prop the proper route. So uh, we got we got to, we got to talk to the comptroller. We need to. I want to have a meeting with Matt Masick and see what there's there's some there's equipment required. It's it's pretty expensive, uh, so, and then might be full time position. So it's in there that we might have to go that route to do what you would like us to do. We want to do it, but we got to do it right. So all that's in there, and uh, we're going to start working overtime. Uh, with our officers to uh, like we did before and and work in traffic enforcement on the key routes because like I mentioned last time there the truckers know what they're not supposed to where they're not supposed to go that's part of their uh, job but of course some of them take want to take a shortcut sure. to make it simpler so uh, we we're going to do exactly what you asked sure okay absolutely we just wanted to, I, I just wanted to point out to you City of Texas City has a right. commercial, <laughs> so so whatever those criteria are, I, I'm I am willing to uh, say uh, that we will yes. meet those. Uh, but definitely, this is part of Safe City. Correct. Uh, we are expanding Safe City uh, into in, into traffic safety as well. And uh, so I think it's important. Um, we'll we'll move I, forward. Just I'm just you know uh, what's challenge a challenge is. If it's going to be a full time position, you know, we don't want to we, we don't have enough people just give up to for that. It might take somebody coming in from the bottom. 
And that's something I'll talk over the city manager. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a that's a Cesar Garcia thing. Right. A council thing is we want to keep our community safe. And yes, we sir. have uh we have identified that these vehicles uh in every community, not just Lamarck, right. but in every community, uh are potentially right. dangerous. So right. thank you, Chief, for your efforts. I I'm excited about it. I know it's gonna be sure epic, and I know it's going to make a tremendous impact on our community. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The last thing I had, Council, was uh, a discussion about this, uh, the Uniform Development uh, Code, uh, if you will, and it's simply to uh, share with Mr. Garcia, Ms. Nance, uh, Gus, uh, I would also like in this code a process for uh, developers if they seek to uh, have an agreement with the city that would uh, provide for some sort of relief, i.e. a 360 agreement, a sales tax abatement agreement, a property tax uh, abatement agreement, any agreement that any potential developer would like to enter into with this city, uh, need we need a process for that outlined in the Uniform Development Code. If we have, for example, if Crossroads Roads, if CRV came, uh, and they said, we need you to help us to build this water supply line. Uh, and we would like to be reimbursed through sales tax. That shouldn't originate with council, nor should that originate with the city manager. We need a process for that to originate with the uh, economic development director to flow through the economic development corporation to end up at the desk of council. Very clear. Uh, delineation where the council is the last body to weigh in, to buffer us against any potential developers. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And so when we bring this back for the council to adopt, I'd like to have this as a part of it. That's very, very important to us as a council. Mary, I just want to comment. Yes, sir. Uh, Kathleen, or you? group that worked on this. It was a very comprehensive document. I read it and I, I liked it. Uh, if I were a developer, I could see very easily fees and, and things of that nature. But I have to agree with the mayor. Uh, it, it did not address um, incentives. And incentives do begin rightfully at the EDC. Um, one thing I kept seeing in here, this comment about the the uh, corporate limits and extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city of Lamarck. Do we have any ETG areas? Yes. I, I, I'd like to know, I'd like to see a map. I'd like to know where they are. I've never seen that. I've asked in the past, never seen it. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks. Very good. Council, we have uh, reached uh, probably before many of you thought the end of our meeting. <laughs> and so we will entertain items for the good of the order. Uh, who's first? Melanie, are you, is it your turn? Sure. Let's go. I just wanted to make sure to let everyone know to have a very happy and safe Easter. Remember to be thankful for all the things that you have. You're here. All right. I got a whole bunch going on. So spring cleanup, April 13th, uh, looks like the, it has been turned over to 1500 municipal street. No. That's what, that's what my new alert on my phone was for my invite to go to it. So did it go back to 4416? Yes. Okay. Just and regard we, that. We will put that flyer out. Okay. Uh, Friday 29th, two to, two to until they're sold out, fish fry at the VFW for Good Friday. Um, but, uh, we already, Killed the police station. Oh, if you're getting a get a letter in the mail, I had to do some research on this one. The Homestead Designation Service uh, comes in your mail. They want a ninety dollar fee to get your your land 
designated as a homestead. That's a fraud. So please don't answer that. Um, don't don't even do that at all. That'd be bad. Uh, so the I like your unified code uh, development guide, but I'd also like for us as a city to review some of our construction ordinances and possibly in single family, somebody building their own home, put up a silt fence because it was really looked a little rough out there on Avenue A. Um, I also need us to look at our residential lot sizes because there's about three different ones inside our ordinances for what a single family home can be and even from where from 22 feet to 45 feet wide. So I think we need to re look into that. I'd also like to look into our zoning ordinances mm -hmm. and our map again because kind of a little off and as businesses grow they may go from light industrial and may end up being an industrial or a heavy industrial as we create this new new ordinance that's coming out because I personally believe the battery storage and the data storage unit uh, areas should be considered heavy industrial just by the type of work that they're doing. Uh, if a restaurant has to have a conditional use permit to be an industrial area because of their waste oil, I think we need to reevaluate how we're looking at some of our other businesses also. Um, other than that, that's it. Okay, thanks, Councilman Rouse. Um, I did have some concerns from the residents at Delaney Cove. I say they are concerning they need a light by the mailbox um, because it's very dark in one of the mailbox areas. Um, and also Union Street, remember that we, they were a part of the life study that we, we still need a street, I'm sorry, street light for them. Um, our Stop the Violence Week is April 14th through the 20th, April 14th through the 20th. Our goal when we started Stop the Violence was to reduce crime by 10% overall in the market. And today we are proud to announce that it's down 11%. So uh, that program gets larger and larger every year. This is our third year doing that. We'll do it at um, College of the Mainland, uh, New Hope Bible Church, and then also at um, the Mark High School for the actual basketball tournament. So our vendors will be there. We're expecting about... 300 people to come out. So we're real excited about that program. The leadership conference will talk about um, what is a leader, um, what does a leader look like? And we have uh, people from around uh, Lamar coming to that. And then on Wednesday, we're having a community fireside chat, talking to some people that who have experienced prison, who chose violence over um, peace. And as a result, their life was altered. So um, we'll have persons talking uh, in the community, we're reaching out to juvenile centers and things of that nature to get some of those kiddos and young adults out to talk about um, what, why options to violence exist and, and just let them know what we have, which is TWC and, and all, all the partners. I want to say kudos to Cesar and the chief when he served as our, uh, temp our interim city manager for starting those partnerships that we needed and MOUs that are so very important uh, for people that we need to reach out to to help solve some of the problems that uh, we can as a council, but we can definitely direct our citizens to those partner groups. So that has definitely made a difference because they are contacting me for Stop the Violence Week. So with that being said, um, our fellow councilman already said this is Resurrection Weekend. Um, enjoy the, the, I hope it's gonna, they said it's gonna be sunny. But I, I do want to say to our to the mayor and this council, we have done, and the staff has done amazing work. I've never seen, and I've been around here now 27 years in this area. I've never seen so much progress in the city so fast and good, positive progress that impacts every American in our city. Today was a good day. There were there was a lot of uh excitement, anticipation, and we are the talk of the county. Um, ever since the State of the Union address that, that happened in Texas City where our mayor received a standing ovation, 
for some of the things that have occurred because of our staff and this council. So though we have challenges, iron, you know, there are some things that, you know, iron sharp is iron. And so we have produced good work. So hats off to you, city manager, the staff, and those of you who have shed silent tears. The best thing, the best revenge is success. And again, I say, we are Team Lamarck, which means together, everyone achieves more together. And so I just want to say to you guys, thank you all so much for hanging in there. And thank you, Mayor, for serving for 20 years. And perhaps this is sunny side up <laughs> <laughs> of everything. But, um, we knew, you know, we're, we're in this to win it. So we're here to make a difference. And not everything is going to be great all the time, but I think we need to stop and say, thank you, God, or thank you. Because with everything that this staff has gone through with people walking out and people having to do the staff at three and four, it's, a, it's amazing to see for those of you that are still here. Thank you for staying and steadying the ship. Has, my hat goes off to you. Have a good weekend. Enjoy a good Friday. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, actually, yes. Uh, wishing everyone a great Easter, as as uh, has been expressed by others. Uh, I had the privilege to attend the mid-year Texas Municipal League Conference in San Antonio. Uh, it, the mid-year conference is a smaller amount of attendees, which I love. Uh, first and foremost, because it's a smaller venue, and it makes it easier for me to walk with my knees. <laughs> and uh, I don't have to rush like those big sites and wherever we were at Dallas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I need to have a taxi just to take me from one building to the other. Our the, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, it, it's exciting to see the number, uh, just to comment at the mid-year conference, which I don't see at the annual conference, which many of us attend. It's exciting to see the number of new faces in the audience and they represent a diversity that represents texas mm -hmm. and that's what i like about the mid-year conference and uh, created some good relationships with bigger cities uh, if you're going to get the work done get to know the assistants of the city managers mm -hmm. and the uh, the deputy city managers and things of that nature because they're really involved in everything and i had that opportunity to meet the uh uh, the the right hands of the Dallas and the San Antonio city managers as well too, and um, and then um, there was one other thing I was going to mention, Mayor, but I, my mind's gone blank. Mm -hmm. As I said, mad cow disease is hitting me. Um, well, once again, holidays, best wishes for the holidays and uh, and uh, to all of us. That's all, Mayor. Very good. Uh, I will. Uh also express best wishes for the holidays to all of us in the city of Lamarck. Uh, the night was three hours worth of progress. Um, in case we didn't hear it, uh, perhaps we've forgotten it. Uh, tonight, council moved toward welcoming eight to 10 multi-level open air restaurants to our community, a hotel and convention center to our community, a $20 million battery storage, the only one of its kind in the state of Texas into our community, 592 jobs at this crossroad development, $39 million worth of potential revenue over a 10 year period. This is all just in one night, y'all. 128 new homes, a new summer parks and recreation program, the first of its kind in our city ever. We welcomed a pavement study, one that hadn't been done in 20 years, this council worked together to add an additional $1.5 million of revenue into our street repair line item. All in one night. 
clearly it's Sonny and Lamarck. Clearly, Lamarck has moved forward uh, faster than we've ever moved before. Clearly, we are in moving in the right direction. Uh, and it is because of this leadership. This is the most talented and innovative leadership that Lamarck has ever seen uh, from Melanie all the way through to Mr. Ross uh, over uh, on the elected uh, capacity, uh, as well as, and Cesar, you mentioned something. Cesar, excuse me, I don't want your wife to get me. Cesar, you mentioned something at our state of the city uh, discussion uh, in the back. Uh, and it 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 dawned on me. You said that eighty percent of our city council has less than three years of experience. Less than four. Less than four years of experience. Eighty percent of us. So this is a whole new council. And you said eighty percent of your directors, right, have finished that for me. Uh, right now, currently less than two years. Less than two years. So we have an entirely... Less than three years. Okay. Less than three years. An entirely different staff. So there are new people. We have won awards for our innovation, right? Yes. Part of the awards that we've won for our innovation is in the area of communication, right? And we have grown over 20,000 residents new homes being built with this crossroads development, Amazon and the potential developments out there at the dog track site, that's 3000 jobs in this community. And so I don't understand anything uh, outside of the one thing that we have been saying all year. And when I mean all year, I mean 2024. It's sunny in Lamarck. If you've been here long enough to know what it was like, Mr. Gandhi, uh, Mr. Hunter, uh, Miss Sally and David, if you've been here long enough, you know it's sunny in Lamarck. I'm excited about where this city's going. I'm excited about our future. Uh, certainly, I wanna thank this council for the no nonsense approach to getting things done that we have witnessed uh, over the past uh, three years, four years, and Mr. Campiano, three or four months, and Mrs. Allred. And Mr. Garcia, I want to thank you and your staff for continuing to roll with the request and the direction that this council has set for you and to continue to grow into the leaders that we know you all to be. Again, we're excited about this. Uh, we are uh, certainly excited about uh, our Easter weekend. Uh, and if I don't see you before, uh, happy Easter to each and every member of this great, great city. Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we open the meeting with condolences for two of our fallen heroes and public servants. Um, our, 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 our thoughts and prayers are with their families. I did want to take a moment to highlight also um, the fact that even members of our uh, extensions of our teams, um, members that we've had leadership mailing with, but also one of our very own uh, members of our uh, local chamber was uh, as dedicated as one of our women of influence, as well as former councilwoman Casey McAuliffe, who is featured as a woman of influence in the paper. I want to take a moment and recognize uh, extension right, of our family. Um, I wanted to uh, thank the staff and the team and the community for a great event on the Easter egg hunt that we had this past Saturday. We had, we gave out over a thousand uh, uh, eggs and they were, we, we we had ARC uh, um, ARC come by. Uh, we had some 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 pets adopted, um, new members of family extensions. I want to remind everybody. I'm gonna ask Kyle to kind of keep up with me here as best he can. Remind everybody that we're gonna be closed on Friday in observance of Good Friday. Uh, you'll you'll likely see this flyer that'll be posted at all of our city buildings. Obviously, our public service and everybody else will still be open. Uh, I ask that everybody please note April 13th is indeed our spring cleanup. Uh, it is, the address has been corrected and thank you, Councilman Ross. We've already corrected it on Facebook for the invites for those that have said that are interested. This is hosted and uh, led by our Keep Lamar Beautiful. So it is out there and it was part of the agenda, but it is something we'd like to close with upcoming events. 
Lastly, I want to comment on our partnership once again this year through KLMBC and a partnership with Sexus City. We are partaking uh, in the 2024 Great American Cleanup once again this year. Uh, it will take place on Saturday, May 11th. Um, Mayor, you you comment on something in Cal last year. Bring the last one up. Um, one of the things that we we mentioned at the last meeting was our Eyes on the Mark program. I'm uh, pleased to announce that the registration for any seniors who would like to be considered for one of the cameras is now open. Uh, we will put this out through marketing, but this is the flyer here. Anybody at home can scan their QR code. We'll also make sure we make it available through Channel 16, YouTube, and our website. Um, obviously, participation in the voluntary camera registry is uh, encouraged still by a lot of our residents. We've gotten a lot of people who are signing up and registering. I challenge everybody who's listening tonight to please register if you haven't done so. I challenge any council or members of staff, extensions of our team and family who haven't done so to please register uh, so we can continue doing so. And if you know anybody that is a senior in Lamarck and would like to be considered, these will go fast. Uh, and we will be announcing a, few more, uh, a, a future event in um, where we will um, hand these out to our seniors and, and discuss the install. Um, last but not least, Mayor, thank you uh, and council for the kind words encouragement. Uh, great steps were taken tonight. Uh, we continue to push forward. We continue to plant seeds and hopefully continue to make you proud. So appreciate you all and appreciate the community for the ongoing support. Thank you. Very good. If there's nothing further, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We stand adjourned.